We're live, or so the software says. Uh, hello, it is May 12th, 2020, which has been a strange year, but it's been, so far, it's been fairly decent. I don't know. It's been weird, but it's been good at the same time. Stranger times and or best of times and worst of times, like they say, right? Uh, it is 9.33 p.m. here in Central Time, and we're going to do some uh, coffee and astronomy. So I hope you have a warm beverage or your favorite beverage nearby because we're going to look at some uh, ancient photons. We're going to have some cool conversation, and we're going to hang out and have a good time. So while everybody's jumping in and we're getting the live viewing thing going on, we've got a live view here of Messier 61, but that's not really what's important here. What's important is the gentleman that always join me for these things. The two coolest guys in the universe, uh, Mr. Stephen Hummel and Ron Sparkman. Stephen, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. It's another amazing night at McDonald Observatory. Uh, clear skies, perfect temps, and uh, yeah, just lovely and quiet. Uh, saw, a mount, saw a mountain lion earlier this morning. A little spooky, so I got the doors closed, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, That's got awesome, a big 16-inch telescope behind me. We're going to have a look at some uh, galaxies, lots of galaxies. We can never look at them all. There's too many. Um, but uh, yeah, I got to look at some cool stuff, drink coffee, have a good conversation. If there's anything in particular uh, you want to see that it's up and it's available and it's doable, uh, let us know in the chat and uh, maybe we can point this bad boy uh, at it and have a look at it live. Awesome, yeah. man. You are the man, dude. Thank you, Stephen, for always... Uh hanging out with us on these things, man. It's, it's just a pleasure, dude. Oh, uh, thank you for having me. This is tons of fun. Love sharing it. Yeah, man. And then there he is, Mr. Ron Sparkman, the space dude. What's, What's up, going dude? on? The space dude, not the space dude. Very important. No, it's the space the... dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Uh, man, glad to be on here. It's been a really, uh, it's been a crazy day. A lot more, more good than bad. But uh, always excited to to hop on here and BS with you guys. Uh, had a really cool conversation with David Iker from um, uh, from Astronomy Magazine and the the prolific space author this morning. Uh, so that was really cool. And uh, even earlier than that, I talked with my friend Sunny from uh, Star, based out of India, uh, awesome rocket company. So it's just been a fun day of streaming and talking to awesome people. So glad to kind of you know. To, to chill out and check out some space stuff and and uh, and have some fun with friends as always. Yeah, man, and you stream probably more than anyone. I think we should call you Ron Stream. Uh, stream Ron Streaming. Yeah. yeah. Ron Streaming. Just he's just he's just a stream of streaming. It was streaming Sparkman. Stream of, yeah, Streaming Sparkman. Streaming Ron, Sparkman. Ron streaming, my name right now. <laughs> whatever. Ron Comet. The guy has nine hundred names. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, but we're gonna go through half this was this was the worst nickname I had whenever I was growing up. It was Big Daddy Mac Jerry Curl with a fro on the side. Uh, <laughs> so that was a thing when I was younger. So that tells you why I quit high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there you go. Yeah, it, it, that's a, that's a long one though. It's kind of hard to believe that people <laughs> remember. How can I forget? <laughs> that one, <right? laughs> that's a good one though. So there it is. Uh, we'll get to some comments real quick and some uh, people joining us in. But we're looking at Messi 61 and that little thing that he's circling there. That, tell us what that is, Stephen. It's not uh, just a star, is it? Yeah. So that's a star in our Milky Way. You know, a few hundred or a thousand light years away. I think we looked it up, but it was really obscure and we gave up. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. No uh, distance, but it's uh, magnitude 14. So. Or, yeah, so not very, not very uh, interesting. Uh, but this is within the galaxy M61, this dot, and it's a supernova. It's a Type II supernova, and so that means it's a massive star, probably eight times the mass of the sun or more, which burned through all its fuel and has exploded in one tremendous moment. And uh, this was discovered May 6th was when this was discovered. So we've only known about this for a few days and uh, it's gonna last a few more weeks before it fades away entirely. So we just happen to be getting a glimpse of it. However, I think this ma this supernova uh, makes this galaxy one of the most active galaxies in terms of supernovae uh, of the Messier catalog, at least for sure. Um, it's had several now, so it's not super, uh, it's a, it's a, there's a lot of stars blowing up pretty quickly in this galaxy. There was one a few years ago yeah. as well. Yeah. So like, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, man. Uh, these things do go off quite a bit. I mean, in cosmic terms, they're like 
uh, firecrackers, but in our terms, we may get, you know, one or few every decades, you know, which is pretty cool that we get, uh, cause there's some galaxies that do exhibit more, uh, supernova activity, like the fireworks galaxy. I mean, they're nicknamed as such because of that reason. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you have a lot of supernovae, what that really means is that, uh, you've got a lot of new stars flowing really fast and we get a lot of star formation, but you tend to also get a lot of, of a, a lot of particularly large stars forming and the bigger the stars, the faster they burn through the fuel and die and then explode. Uh, so that tells us that essentially they're, th this galaxy is forming new stars at a high rate. Those young new stars live short lives and blow up. Um, so yeah, it kind of indicates sort of the, the health of the galaxy in a way. Um, yeah. And I mean, I guess if, you know, you, to, to, to have stars, some stars have to go, uh, go the way of the dinosaur to pr you know, provide the stuff you know, to make the next generation of stars. Indeed, that's like how the sun was born, right? I mean, we, we were, you know, sort of the leftover guts of a bigger star that sort of coalesced and formed into the uh, the solar system we know. Yep, that's right. Yeah, so as that star dies, its contents will be recycled and form new stars. That's the cycle. Beautifully recycled, yeah. It's a yeah. circle of life. Of life, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that would, I, the only reason I did that was because I knew it would trigger Ron. <laughs> so we got a lot of comments in here while we while we've got a lull in the conversation. I want to uh, shout out to all of our regulars: Joe Colliff from uh, Houston Astronomical Society, Lyra Parrish from my living room right in here, uh, Bob Snyder all the way from Austin, Texas, Brad Sloan, Austin, Texas, Joshua from Philly. Uh, Hill, uh, Hill I, I, I'm, I say that name wrong every time I know I do. Uh, Ben, Ben Fields, hello. Uh, Chris Davis says the supernova. Yeah, this is a supernova in M61 or Messier 61. So if you go get a picture of Messier 61, this galaxy right over here, and you compare it to this image, you'll notice that there is a new star inside the galaxy. Let's do uh, that. that Oh, there you go. Yes. Is it rotated we'll around? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like uh, uh rotated a little bit. That's a good image, though. Oh no, yeah. wait, you see those three stars are on the oh. on the right of the image. Oh yeah, so it's see. flipped left and right, right? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. flip it uh, 180 degrees, like flip it upside down. Can you do that? I don't know if it, this is Wikipedia. It's not gonna let me do that. <laughs> Stupid wicked <laughs> I just pulled it. Anyway, I'm sure, yeah, like this star top, I could figure this out in a, with enough yeah. time, but I don't want to stop the whole conversation. <laughs> right, so like that, that, that chain of three stars is on the, the right side of that image. It's on the left in the, in the image we're seeing right here. And then uh, that there's an okay. extra star between the, uh, the top and bottom, right near the core, basically. I mean, you know, just off from the core so that star would be just up from that middle star or the, yeah. I'm sorry, the supernova would be just up right I mean, there. it exactly. should be right there yeah it should exactly. be right there and not yeah you you're got right. it dude so yeah again this is taken from a different telescope with flipped differently but yeah is yeah, that is right. that hubble or is that this is uh ESO, huh? eso i think this is um oh let me look it up i don't know click the link i think this is not hubble yeah it it might be a very it's, large telescope somewhere hubble. Is it Hummel? No, not really. It's a Hummel space telescope. It's not. It's no. not Stephen Hummel. It's not Stephen, <laughs> Stephen Hummel. So, what if Stephen Hawking and Edwin Hubble had a baby? <laughs> Stephen Hubble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the VLT. It's the VLT telescopes. Anyway. The VLT, yeah. the very large telescope. There you go. Yeah. Sounds delicious. Can I get that um, one, Mayo? Very large. Uh, Would you like extra VLT. large or very large? No, spe no special orders, please. Uh, <laughs> we don't, we don't, don't deviate from our menu. <laughs> uh, Joe says it's raining. Jeff says hello all. Uh, I feel like uh, Stephen is Stan's long lost cousin. So that's actually a really good compliment. So Stan, just to let y'all all know, Stan Metter is the owner of the X Bar Ranch where the El Dorado Star Party is held, and um, I guess Stephen reminds her of Stan or. Steven, yeah, is, did I say that right? Yeah, uh, Stan is a really cool guy, uh, and he owns the X Bar Ranch, and 
hosts us every year when we have our star party. That's funny. <laughs> uh, Chris says, did you know Mount Lions can mm-hmm. Mountain Lions can jump 10 feet high? Surely they aren't that hungry to eat you, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> but the chances they also of getting- sound like dying women being, yeah, like, it, they sound terrible when in like mating season they they're yeah, calls they screech. Are, yeah it's really jarring it woke me up last night <laughs> the odds of dying from a mountain lion are um yeah, low but never yeah. zero this <laughs> is like true. On <laughs> ron is a stream beast lyra says he is I, Thank absolutely you, lyra. she looks uh, familiar right. i don't know where i've seen her face before mm, i don't know mm. she might she might be in the other room uh in the other room yeah yeah Hello, Lyra. How's it uh, going? <laughs> Brad says another supernova. Yeah, exactly. And what was cool is, you know, these things pop up all the time. Uh, sometimes we just aren't in position to get to see them. Uh, but luckily, you know, with especially with this one, we really got a good look. I mean, M61 is right in the Virgo cluster. That's right. Isn't it in the Virgo cluster, Steve? Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I thought I thought I remembered that. So it's like, you know, that's a really good spot right now, especially because Virgo is nice and high. Um, so we've got lots of, you know, less atmosphere or whatever between us, which is good. And, um, you know, if you live on a mountain like Steven does, you can get up close and personal with this galaxy, get some structure. Of course you could do that from almost anywhere, but not quite like he's got it here. Yeah. Let's get some more galaxies in. We had a good look at that. So yeah, let's go to, uh, M95. And Joe Richard says tonight's episode is brought to you by the Hummel Space Telescope. <laughs> That's right. They're going to name it for him. Right. It's Hummel, yeah. time. Hummel, Hummel, Hummel time. People, people always take that all the time. Hey, Jim. How's it going? There he is, Mr. Jim Twelman. Jim Twelman. I was trying to process how to say it. Sorry, Jim. Uh, Jeff says, this looks fantastic. Will it look this big in my XDA daub I got? Probably I mean, not. But no, but. You can see but, it. Yeah, we were just talking about that, Jeff. If you have dark enough skies and clear enough, and you know exactly where M61 is and just get your telescope in the right position and then train your eye to look for that supernova, you will see it with your eye if you mm-hmm. point that telescope, even an 8-inch at M61, absolutely. You remember, Charles Messier found all the Messier objects with, I think it was a 4-inch telescope or a, a three and a half or something, or maybe it was even a 2-inch. It was a yeah, small aperture. Yeah, some bigger ones too, but Did yeah, he? he started out. With, yeah, but um, yeah, he had, he he had a quite a few telescopes. Anyway, yeah, and then uh, Pierre had a couple of uh, nice scopes as well. Pierre Machine, who uh, mm-hmm. found some of the stuff on Messier's list, but Messier's like, I'm going to take your object, put it on my list. That's mine now. Yeah, and nobody said anything. It's hilarious. <laughs> oh, it looks like the scope wasn't actually done moving because there. space. <laughs> because because space. Because, because space. Science. This is hey, uh, M95 here. Oh, yes. The TIE Fighter, huh? Is that what the nickname of this? I think so. Yeah. I, I Well, I like to call it, there's, there's definitely a TIE Fighter, uh, you know, in the in the Hubble tuning fork. There's definitely a subcategory of TIE Fighter galaxies. <laughs> it's just it's all, it's all classification, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a whole thing. The uh, Unicron from the Transformers movie, like the animated movie from way back in the day, as he was like, because mm. he had that... It came out to the side, and then it came out like he had that, like that halo around him. And it was like the moon. I don't know. Maybe that's before everybody hears time, but that's my favorite movie because Optimus Prime. And it's also the movie I hate the most because Optimus Prime dies. So, <laughs> so that's where I'm at on that. Mm. Spoiler alert for those of y'all that haven't seen it. Yeah, I was just fixing to watch that. No, I'm just kidding. You need to watch <laughs> it, Stephen. Like, you don't, I mean, the rest of them are blasphemous in comparison to the amazing, especially that 80s soundtrack. Oh, it's classic. Mm. I do like a good 80s soundtrack. I could get behind that. Oh, yeah. 80s is, is awesome. And you said so that's M95? Yeah. What was it, 96? Okay. It was 95. Oh. Right? <laughs> yeah, it was 95. Yep. Okay. Leo. 32 million light years away. So that light that's hitting Steven Scope left there 32 million years ago. And uh, it was a Tuesday that day when it left there. Sure. And now it's hitting his, now it's hitting his sensor. And now it's uh, hitting your see. eyeballs the magic of the internet. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's it's weird though. It's a recreation. It's like almost like a transporter photon because it's you know it's coming out of my right. screen. It's weird. Uh yeah, yeah, you're right. Supernovas do make uh, a lot of elements heavier than iron. 
uh, generated in those final moments. Um, so yeah, if you have uh, well gold or you know a lot of different elements, honestly, uh, you can thank a supernova explosion for most likely creating that. Water, I think, is also uh, there's a lot of water created. I've heard that before, where there's a certain layer around the supernova where the it's like water is created. So like that, hydrogen that make, and oxygen bonding together. That does make some sense, considering how much hydrogen and oxygen are in stars. Yeah, it, don't take our word for this kind of stuff. Again, you can always fact check us with uh, the yeah. Googles. So uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate y'all fact checking us. Uh, but I did hear that somewhere. I think it was Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, told me over uh, over tea one night. So. That was, <laughs> <laughs> what's he like uh, he cool? uh he's very cool he he loves uh tea earl gray hot <laughs> uh vintage venture says greeting earthlings greeting vintage ventures uh brad says like to see comet 5d <laughs> boards in six mag oh is it six mag really i wow. tried looking that up but i didn't what well, mine weird... is saying is 19.55 so I don't know if we're talking about the same comet. That's a uh, yeah, wow. That's a hmm. So yeah, but what is that really the name of it? It's 5D Bro uh, uh I've never seen a comet uh, with that designation. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it. Your uh, your on axis guider flips yes, the image with the prism. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then I also I think I left it flipped again on um, uh -huh. yeah, horizontally on my settings. So yeah, you know, just to make it extra confusing, just to be really yeah. inconsistent. Yeah. Well, I mean that's the way we got to do it here. Yeah. Um, Steve says clouds are on their way. It's almost eleven. Still waiting on clouds. We're doing the same thing here in Southeast Texas. Uh, Ron and his constituents blew a big cold front down at us again, and but it's not quite you know the Gulf moisture. We're kind of fighting back right now. Uh, so, uh, we're getting w high wind outside and clouds, but no, no fun storms yet, unfortunately. Yeah. We had uh, some big storms last night here. Now oh, did you really? Just cleared off and, uh, uh, now it's perfect again, but yeah, we, we almost lost power and stuff. It was bad. First big storm of the season. Uh, oh, we're looking at the galaxy. There is a question, uh. For Miriam, I wanted to, I'll, yeah. I'll ask the whole panel here if you've read a book by Neil deGrasse Tyson. I have not. I've actually read, I've gotten most of the way through a couple of them, but I haven't actually finished one, so I can't say that I've uh, read one. What about you guys? I have read that one, uh, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry, uh, just to, <laughs> what, to decide whether or not I wanted to recommend it. And I yeah. Thought, yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. So, uh, But that's only one of his. Um, I have actually read all the way through as well. Um, I kind of missed the whole, uh, uh, you know, Tyson train. Uh. <laughs> Just went zooming on by. Huh? Yeah. I did too. I mean, I never got into his books, but I really enjoy uh, the cosmos and I mean, all the universe episodes. I mean, I always watch those. Yeah, well, you, Ron, you ever read any uh, reading books? You're, Ron's you're, muted. Uh, Ron, Ron muted. Uh oh, can he? Oh, he is, but he's unmuted, but we can't hear him. Oh, no. Uh oh, like, audio. Oh, wait. <laughs> We've lost the audio. We'll, we'll get back to him. He's, he's, he'll, he'll um, fix it. <laughs> and then someone asked whether the, what's the average seeing at McDonald's? Oh, um, I missed that uh, one. Sorry. Sorry. Um, Here it is. It, it's about over the course of the year, it's 1.1 1. 1 arc seconds. Check, 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 check. Uh, at the moment, it is 0.93. It's a little better than average. 0.93, nice. Uh, Eddie T, our good friend, Mr. Eddie Trevino, says, Galaxies, rah! What's up, Eddie? The man, the myth, the there you go. He's himself, back. Mr. Eddie, Eddie Trevino. All right, let's go next door here. I'm going to save this. Mr. Mercado, hello. And then Eddie says, hello, Will, Stephen, and Ron. Hello. Hello, hello. Hey, hey, man, how's it going? Good to see you. Uh, Andromeda is not up, Camilla. It's not. We won't get Andromeda probably till what? Early fall? A late summer? Early fall? Late summer. Somewhere in there. Late summer, if you can stay up all night long and wait for, you know, the early morning observing. 
Uh, the moon is close to the Virgo cluster tonight. Uh, is it? Um, no, no it's actually... not a, it, it doesn't rise till 2 a.m., 2.30 or something like that. Yeah, the moon, yeah, yeah. From here, right. anyway. Yeah, so. Okay, so what galaxy, I'm sure T Camilla meant for the last one, but that was M95 that we just looked at. Which one is this, man? This is beautiful. Uh, this is, well, let me restart it. Uh, M96, right next oh. door. So I just barely moved the telescope over. Um, and it's, yeah, it's right next to it. So... And uh, awesome. they'll start to stack together. That's an awesome view, man, Jeff. Yeah, it's one yeah. of my favorite early experiences in astronomy. Looking through an amateur telescope was, you know, have uh, just a, a high power view of the core of M42. You know, like it, it's it never gets old. It's really incredible. Just wait till it's clear. That's an awesome scope. Exactly. What on a clear, good night, man. They're awesome. Uh, we got to the... that question. 10 inch earlier yeah anyway. yeah yeah i think it's a 10 or 8 i think it was an 8 he had uh Sujata says is it right to assume that all the objects you can spot in the sky with naked eye are parts of our galaxy uh milky way galaxy yes mostly now uh if you see the milky way band that's all in our galaxy all that stuff but if andromeda like uh, camilla was talking about uh, that's actually uh, in a dark place. You can see it naked eye, and that's outside of our Milky Way galaxy. Uh, but that's pretty much the exception to that rule, unless I missed one, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Andromeda, and I guess if you count the large and small magellanic clouds. Yeah. Um, and, and some people say they can see, yeah, tri the Triangulum Galaxy. In 33, right. Yeah. But but all of those, like, they're clearly non-stellar, you know, and they're clearly not the band in the Milky Way. Um, so, but yeah, pretty tough. much, especially if you're like in the city, everything you see in the sky is within our Milky Way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this I like this galaxy we're looking at here because um, if you may have already noticed, you know, you got the core of the galaxy. We'll zoom out a little bit more. Um, I got the core here, and um, there's this brighter part right there. Mm. That, that's actually another galaxy in the background. So. Nice. And it's superimposed. So we're seeing that galaxy through another galaxy. It's kind of a fainter outer arm around it. Almost a yeah. ring. Still a ring around it. Um, someone asked earlier about why some galaxies have bars and some don't. And that's a really good question. Uh, and the answer is it's really complicated. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> why, so, so bars are, are a kind of density wave. So basically, like, you know, like, the stars in the in here are going around. I have an animation of this somewhere here. Let me pull it up because I used okay. this in my program the other night. Um, Jim so the, says, the, uh, and thank neutron star mergers too. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. There we go. Okay, so there you go. Here, yeah, so you got stars going around. Notice, like, follow the circle, and you'll see that it eventually will pass through the arm. The arms themselves aren't actually going around. The stars are moving through in an orbit around the center, and they clump up to form the spirals. So it's like a traffic jam, and then they keep going. Um, so it's the density, an overdensity of stars and gas that creates the spiral arms. Uh, and basically, it's the same kind of thing in the center. Basically, they near the center as they're rotating around, they tend to clump together more and kind of lock and step and form a bar. And generally speaking, the older the galaxy, the more likely it is to have a bar. Uh, however, um, not all of them do, and we're still kind of learning exactly why. Um, so yeah, all <laughs> yeah, look at those bars. <laughs> look at those yeah. bars. Yeah, this one isn't as strongly barred, but it definitely has a lot more going on at the center and a very faint outer ring, uh, halo That's of beautiful, stars. Beautiful man, and that yeah. faint halo is so beautiful, and you can see that there's almost like gaps in it—a gap at the bottom and maybe a little mm -hmm. gap at the top. Where there's uh, yeah, there's just some sort of uh, you know physics happening there that I don't fully understand, but is probably part of a merger that has settled in. You know, it's that, probably stars that have been flung out due to mergers, probably right. Yeah, it, likely. Usually, if there's something funky going on in a galaxy, nine times out of ten, it's because of a merger. So yeah, it's kind of a catch-all. Or we can blame now. magnetism. Yeah, like like mergers yeah. and magnetisms is basically the you know. Are they being flung off forever, or are they going to come back? Like, how long has it been since that merger? You know? It's probably been a long, millions of years. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, yeah, I, I mean, that's another thing about bars and these shapes is that galaxies evolve over time and the bars may not be a stable feature. They may actually become so big they, fl they fling themselves apart. Um, one of my favorite titles of any astronomy paper um, is um, uh, Do All Bars Have Peanuts? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the Milky Way is a bar spiral galaxy and uh, basically the, the, the uh, so a lot of these barred galaxies, this one, not a good example, but the previous one, uh, that um, they, they have a, a kind of a peanut shape to them, meaning two lobes, uh, if you were to like, view it edge on, um, because the stars are kind of oscillating back and forth. Um, and we think that's normal over time, that uh, eventually all the bars will, will kind of devolve into this weird peanut sort of a shape. Yeah. Due to interactions, yeah. Very, very interesting stuff. Else, yeah. All right. Uh, uh, Joe wants to know about your camera that you're using, Stephen. He's looking to upgrade his Astro camera. I'm using a ZWO ASI 1600 MM Pro. So it's a monochrome color, uh, camera. And I have a filter wheel in front of it. Um, and... Uh, now we're looking at M105 and friends. Um, oh yes, it's not done slewing. Uh, so yeah, it's um, it's a CMOS sensor. Binning two by two. It's cooled. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What else do you want to know? Um, if I can have it, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Said says, "Hi guys, what are you looking at?" Well, we're looking at galaxies mainly tonight. I think that's where we're going to spend. 98% of our time. <laughs> what did you say, Ron? Pretty Sorry. much. Galaxy season. It is. That's right. Let me nudge the scope over a little bit here. Vintage Ventures says Timothy Ferris, coming of age in the Milky Way is a must read. Interesting. I like hmm. Timothy Ferris's work a lot. Uh, seeing in the dark uh, is really good stuff. Uh, or losing the dark, I think. Sorry, one of those two. Seeing it's a it's a good book you'd like, uh, Stephen, about light pollution. Oh, I'm not familiar and, with that, um, that one. Yes, seeing in the dark. Uh, he interviewed Barbara Wilson, which is actually um, uh, one of the Texas Star Party. She recently passed, but she was of te Texas Star Party lore and fame. And uh, yeah, it, Timothy far. Ferris does have a book on uh, on light pollution too. Uh, George says that's the quietest I think I've ever seen Ron. Well, <laughs> he's, he's mostly been muted, so there you, go. there you go. It's a new mic setup, George, so uh, maybe you'll get a little bit more of that tonight. Whether or not that's a good thing to you is, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I'm trying to frame this best, so I don't, uh, I don't know. Celso wants knows. to know uh, what's your favorite source of astronomy knowledge, Stephen? Uh, says you learned a lot on your own. Um, my favorite source of astronomy knowledge, geez, um, I don't know. Uh, I honestly, uh, the way I learn is just, I look up in the sky, you know, as an amateur astronomer, I find something and then I go look up what that was and then I read about it. Um, there's, um, I mean, there's a lot of books, a lot of textbooks I read. They're not necessarily my favorite, but, you know, it's how I kind of caught up with a lot of the textbooks. But he got through them. I got, I got, <laughs> yeah, through them. I'm having trouble getting this one started here, but it'll be worth it. Um, I also well, like... Wow, right when you clapped, it was like, boom. Boom, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, one of my favorite websites, I don't know why that this one sprang, sprang to mind, but it's spaceweather.com. I just like their articles and stuff. That They, they come up with things I don't really think about, uh, things I don't really like. Uh, uh, they're not mainstream. They're kind of just technical enough to be interesting. It may, it may spur you on to read more, but but not so advanced that it's just like, you know, way over your head. But yeah, spaceweather.com does really cool stuff. Uh, I like, like the stuff. Space weather. Space weather. Oh, okay. Space weather. Yeah. 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 They really do have good, fun articles, and they have space weather, so you can tell how much fun oh, plumage right. the the sun is pushing off of itself, uh, which is a, a a weird way to put it, but that's what I did. Um, <laughs> uh, Mr. Adam Corville says, "Is this Pleiades star cluster visible tonight?" No, it is not. The Pleiades is gone. 
for the year, I think, until uh, we get what back into the late summer, early mm-hmm. fall. Yeah, around the time Andromeda comes back. Yeah, yeah. Be good to see the Pleiades again. Have we done M104, the Sombrero Galaxy? We haven't tonight, we but can do we it. could very well do that in a little bit if you want to, uh, Stephen. Sure. Since so because we do take requests here. Yes. At, uh, Coffee and Astronomy Live. Yeah, I mean, I have a list, but I mean, you know, we don't have to follow it. I'm just kind of like, I don't know. We do. We. I do want to. I do want to see that Hickson Galaxy group after oh, yeah. this yeah. group. So let. Oh. So let's talk about this group right here that we're looking at real quick before you leave. Uh, what, what, what? Which one was um, this again? This is M105 over here. This big elliptical, okay. and uh, this guy. You know, he's a, he's an elliptical, and that guy's a spiral. That's all I know, really. <laughs> That's all I know. Right? I didn't look up anything about these. Um, I was just okay. like, oh, they're bright. I'll go for it. <laughs> so the, the the two big ones on the left, I'm sorry, the right, because everything's backwards, uh, 37 and 31 million light years, the two big ones. And then that little guy off into the left, at 63 million light years. So that yeah. guy's actually a yeah. lot bigger than yeah. those little guys to the right. He's- well, he may not be as dense, you know, because these are ellipticals. Uh, they yeah. tend to be very dense, and you know, they're spherical, whereas that's a disc. So, yeah. um, but in terms of area, yeah, it's actually that's pretty big. It's almost twice as far as these. So, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's, yeah that's, a, that's a nice. That's trippy to think about. Like, if you were in this galaxy, that one would still be pretty far. Yeah, it'd right? be, it'd be, it'd be, yeah, it'd be further than you than the Milky Way. So you'd right. be right in between the Milky Way and that galaxy. It's like half the distance. That's insanity. Oh no. Yeah. Will, guess who's here? Who? Uh oh, who? I missed you so know. many comments. You know who it is. <laughs> oh, oh, he's back. Okay. <laughs> Tony's I didn't bring Tony. my Yuhu. Ah, I was going to. I was gonna get a Yoohoo for the next time I live stream. I screwed that up. I'm sorry, everyone. I really was gonna go grab some snacks and I was gonna grab some if he showed up. Like, <laughs> I might go in a little bit, go grab some, and I'm totally gonna I'm gonna I don't know how much Yoohoo the gas station will have, but if they do <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna buy it all. Vintage Venture says I've seen M eighty one and M eighty two naked eye. Wow. That's I've, amazing. I've heard people I've never been able to do that. Um, I've never tried. It trick. seems like a lofty goal. I've heard people say that they can. It's not the first time. Um, wow. But yeah, I've never been able to do it. But I've been, I've been able to like. Yeah. See. Yeah. You can see globulars naked eye. Yeah. Some yeah. You can see. Uh, you can see M13 naked eye at a dark place with really nice skies. Uh, you could see Omega Centauri uh, if mm-hmm. you live in a place where you can actually see that far south. So anything up New York way, forget about Omega Centauri. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I could probably see it right now if I stepped outside. Or maybe a little later, maybe like an hour or something. But um, Has NASA ever flown through a nebula and filmed it possible? No, I don't think it's A, possible because the complexes are so vast and so spread out that even if you were inside a nebula, you probably wouldn't even really know because yeah. everything would be so spread out. Uh, try to get through some of these comments here. Yeah, exactly. You know what? That's actually one I don't know. What is the closest nebula to us? Um, well, uh, the closest interesting one, actually, I think it's in Ro of Uh, mm. it's like 400 light years away or something. Is probably are close? closer ones. Yeah, the big, the big, uh, dark cl- bands of that. Um, you, you, if you don't know what Rio Fuji is, you've seen it in pictures for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, let's see if I have one. Right there across Scorpius. A profile picture on some things, but uh, which is weird. Yeah. It's called Rio Ro Fuji, you know, for Ophiuchus, but it's kind of mostly in Scorpius or Scorpio, whatever. Yeah, Hilarious. yeah, it is. Yeah, so that's it. Um, I think that's one of the closest ones. That's Antares right there, um, and. Uh, M4 yeah. is that next to it? Yeah, that's that M4, globular. that globular. You can see so. that one kind of naked eye too, huh? I think maybe. Maybe not. Uh, that's kind of, no, that glob's kind of faint. Um, is it? You can see it with like a little bit of optical aid. It doesn't take much, but I don't know if you can. Binoculars, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bob Snyder says, looking at my field of view for M61, 
tells me that I need a new scope. Yeah, <laughs> that's about the way it works, isn't it, George? I mean, Bob, sorry. Yeah, that's the way it works, man. Uh, spiral Galaxy, yes. And this is a, uh, uh, sp this is kind of a spiral. This is one of those uh, mm -hmm. weird kind of galaxies, a lenticular, though. Yeah, it's kind of borderline lenticular, borderline spiral. On the, um, I have the uh, uh, tuning fork, the H Hubble Devoculars diagram on hand, I think, from my last stream. Patrick Harper says your voice appears deeper, Ron, due to your new studio equipment. So there you go. There you go. Nice. It's actually picking up the rest of my voice instead of. <laughs> <laughs> That's so he's, he's now uh, Ron Barry White. <laughs> um, Hello, ladies. The sombrero is this classification. Right in there? Yeah, yeah, right in there. So it's kind of lenticular, kind of spirally. No bar to it. So, yeah, right there. SBA. Oh, I'm sorry. SAA. SAA, which which is uh, good knowledge to have. Now, in a telescope, in an eight inch, ten inch telescope, this thing is going to be, you know, just a tiny little sliver. What you're seeing, Stephen, do here is actually pretty amazing. Now, I I would say that this rivals or is pretty close to like what my eyeball got out of Jimmy Lowry's forty eight inch Dobsonian uh, when I looked at Sombrero. It was very similar to this, even the field of view, uh, mm -hmm. looking at this. So um, if you have a 48 inch job, you can do things like this at like, you know, four or five, 600 power. Whereas if you have an eight inch job, you might not be able to get that high in the power spectrum. Yeah, uh, but, things get too dim and shaky and but, stuff. Yeah. But yeah, but you will see it. Uh, you will see it even at like a hundred power or 150, yeah. 200 power. You and will one definitely of the, see this galaxy. The, yeah, the interesting things about this galaxy is that the core is exceptionally bright. And so you can actually see, if, even if you can't see like everything around it, you can see the center of it uh, with a pretty small telescope. Um, even like two or three inches, I bet you could probably pick up the core. Um, you, you may not get all the detail here, but yeah. But yeah, yeah the seeing pretty good. We got a lot of uh, detail in the dust lane. Yeah, and uh, Sujata is wondering if, you know, because of the less aviation going on, less pollution, if we can see better. I It's cloudy yeah. outside, so I haven't noticed a difference. What about you, Steve? You've had more clear nights in Chile, I feel like. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm in the middle of nowhere anyway, so that's a question I've been asked a lot. And, you know, my, my job, my day job, my job, is working on light pollution issues. Uh, that's my job here at McDonald's. I do other things, too. I do outreach as well, but that's what my job title is at least dark sky specialist um so uh we've taken we're i'm gonna take some real scientific measurements of the brightness of the sky well actually i already have but uh, i've sent the data off to be processed um and the initial results are mm, uh not particularly different and i'm hunting through my pictures right now there it is um so i did take some go through some satellite data uh, and um, I have to download this picture from my my cloud here. And uh, there we go. All right. So uh, this is West Texas. All right. And uh, here is Houston uh, down in the corner. Uh, here is um, Dallas Fort Worth. Here's El Paso. I am located kind of in here. And this is all the Permian Basin oil and gas industry, and it's Midland, Odessa. So uh, what I wanted to know was, did the oil crash affect the amount of light pollution coming off from the oil and gas, especially flares, is what most of the satellite's picking up. Mm -hmm. uh, and the answer is a little bit, yeah. I mean, you can see these two bright clumps here. If you look up top, they're not there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and generally it's a little dimmer, but the difference isn't dramatic. And uh, you know, in general, it, it's it's maybe slightly darker, but but only down low in a part of the sky we would never aim a telescope anyway. Um, so, you know, you know, it's it's not necessarily um, you know solving all of our problems with light pollution. Yeah, one thing I did want to bring up real quick before we uh, we go you know, to any other objects or anything is 
some of the uh with the, the chat that i'm showing here uh with all the comments like the one from uh camilla here uh with requests for objects just in case we forget i guess these are objects well, i think i think we already showed m105 or maybe uh that's the uh... one she she was talking about this may have been before um but uh my point is is that some of the sources if you're commenting on them we may not be able to see them because we're broadcasting to like 900 Ooh, yeah. different places tonight and for some reason face uh, the the stream yard app won't pull from all of those uh so if you don't see us mentioning your comments and you we haven't said hello to you you probably might be watching us on one of the the platforms that isn't talking to us so uh, go to Facebook and see if you can find our stream. There's links everywhere uh, on Stardom, on Deep Sky Dude. Um, there's links all over the place. If you want to, if you if you're if we're not seeing your comments, so I apologize. We need humble links. Uh, eventually, we're going to figure out Instagram, and when we figure out yeah. Instagram, it's over. Yeah, at least for the first it's hour. <laughs> came over, dude, and then Reddit too. Reddit, God, we got to see if we can figure that one out. That's going to be my yeah. next. Yeah, that's gonna be a tough one. I mean, well, because Reddit is just like random people doing random things, and it's like between ten and twenty thousand people watching. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, I don't understand that. Like, you just gotta like get lucky and 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 get you know highlighted or something. Yeah, which I bet you, if we were doing the moon or something like that, it, people would stop. You know, mm. or even this that's right like here. Views of like the like Venus and the moon and and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. So this is. Hickson 61, right? Yeah, the box. The box. I wonder why they call it the box. What's in well, the box? Once we get rid of the star trails here. Looks more like a doorway. Yeah, or a... I turn my head that way. Let me clear it. Yeah, all right. I'll While you're getting here. that set up, uh, Camilla says, Will, I have three different mixes of chocolate from Mexico and pure cocoa grind grinded from beans. Uh, I have the best chocolate ever. I should put together a sample box for you to try good chocolate. I would I would eat good chocolate. I like good chocolate. Yuhu is chocolate water. It's gross. No one should drink it. It's it's chocolate water. The best thing ever. <laughs> Them is fighting words. I've said it before and I'll say it again. <laughs> That's like saying flat earth, you know, you know, flat earth is five G is caused by COVID is caused by <laughs> Flat Earth is caused by 5G. Yes, that's what yeah. caused by 5G. Get rid of 5G and the world will be round again. It, it, it's it's weird how. It. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I didn't look at uh, these. How far away are these? They're uh, if they're a Hickson. They're a good. Let's they're a good ways off. Two hundred million. Two hundred million light years. Two hundred million light years. Yep. What's the furthest and, back we looked now? Was it three or four billion years? Was the furthest back we looked at one night? Uh, oh, when we looked at the twin quasar, that was eight point six billion. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, that's kind of an exception. Like we can't usually look at things, you know, yeah. that far away. But yeah, almost twice as old as our home. That's crazy. so in interestingly, uh, Stephen. The data that I'm getting from Sky Safari Pro. Now this is again, this is Sky Safari Pro. So uh, I mean, I have to go with what their data says. The bottom left galaxy, that real faint one, that's yeah. right there. That one is only. Let me click on it. Forty-four million light years away. Oh well, I can believe that. It's a lot bigger. Yeah, um, so it's only forty-four million light years away, and the rest are uh, either exactly two hundred or one ninety. So, uh, which is strange because I thought the Higgs and galaxies were interacting but i guess maybe he just grouped them together if they were in the sky together yeah i think that's how those work they, i mean yeah it can be hard to tell sometimes if they're just you know sky neighbors or real neighbors hello yeah i don't Danielle. know who you are but hello <laughs> hello uh let's see i'm missing a lot of comments so i'm gonna get to some of these real quick go ahead ron sorry no i was just saying it's like fan club <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Joe says the globular cluster question was related to the question about seeing things outside the Milky Way. Yes. Uh, the general area is great in binoculars. I think he was talking about um, Rho uh, of Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That area is amazing. There's just so much to look at in the heart of our Milky Way down there. It's just so beautiful. Uh, so I, I'm, 
I'm I'm saying like a tiny little galaxy right there as well. Ooh. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, I totally see it. Yeah. How far from major cities should someone travel to get a decent view of the night sky as far as possible? Yeah. That's my answer. Pretty much. I mean, the minimum. 100, 200 miles? Yeah, I I mean, at minimum, to get, like, see the Milky Way, you want at least to... Uh, 60, 70 miles or so, um, I would say. Uh oh, we got a we got a weird one there. Uh, there, Wilbo Baggins. Oh, I'll get to it. Jebediah's, unless maybe he's just being silly. Maybe he's somebody that knows you. So I want to throw somebody under the bus, but uh, I don't know about that. But thank you for warning me, so I didn't put it up. <laughs> a lot of times I don't proofread these comments, and I just put them up. And I apologize if you've been offended by something you've seen here. That is not our intention. Like the I one that put it put it up on screen. It was like the longest one holding all night. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. Yeah, it's it's Fair a little bad. bit tougher to run these than than it than than uh, it looks, I guess. Uh, Benjamin says, "I'm here with the Yuhu." Okay, great. I hope you brought enough for everybody here, Benjamin, because we're gonna need some massive amounts of Yuhu. Eddie T says, "Thanks for showing me the sombrero, amigo." Gracias. Welcome. Gracias for requesting the good old sombrero. We got to see that. I mean, that's. Uh, that's the way it goes. One. Yeah. Uh, Jane says, what Uh-oh. in your opinion, guys, Uh-oh. on those satellites yep. they intend to put up ruin our beautiful sky for astronomy and just the pleasure of looking up? So Jane is talking about Starlink. And Uh-oh. while Steven talks about Starlink, I'm going to uh, sweep the floor a little bit here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, I mean... Well, I, I missed kind of the comment there. I was moving the dome, but um, uh, Starlink. Uh, oh, what okay. is the um, is it the question we get every time we stream? I, every Somebody's time, always gonna ask it because why wouldn't they ask three people that love the night sky? Yeah, so <laughs> perfectly valid question. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, the Starlink is is a uh, concern with the amount of satellites they want to put up, uh, and 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 it, it yeah. It, it would it would pose a big problem for not just astrophotographers but professional astronomers as well, uh, having all these satellites crossing through the view and ruining your data. Um, now there are ways to get around it, but some tel- not for some telescopes, not not all the time. And um, the good news is Ellen Musk says that you know they're 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 working on a potential solution that uh, will essentially act like a star shade. Uh, or, or like a sunshade from the point of view of the Earth to block some of the light. Uh, so cool if it works. Uh, I'm not holding my breath because you almost uh, need to coffee everywhere, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool, you know. Nice I mean, shades, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it, if it, if his idea works to like just have basically like an umbrella. Uh, from the perspective of the Earth, but keep the sunlight on the solar panels or the satellites that it needs, then mm. that'd be great. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'm curious about the timeline and, and how that's going to really work. Um, so uh, he, he does actually seem to be aware of it. Now, for radio astronomy, I'm not sure what they can do, if anything, because, you know, radio astronomers are, are equally concerned, if not more concerned about Starlink, uh, because of, there's just so many satellites all, the, all over the place uh, with radio missions. The, the, the radio missions they're, they're making, you know, the communication satellites are relatively narrow, uh, so you can work around them, but if you're trying to do science in that particular wavelength, they're kind of just out of luck with Starlink. There's really nothing you can do. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's a concern uh, that we're working on. And yeah, at least optical astronomy might have some hope. Yeah. Hopefully uh, they stop. Uh, Emily Normandy says, hi, Ron Sparkman. What's up, Emily? Emily's uh, one of my coworkers at Space Foundation. And uh, oh. there's this funny thing that always makes me giggle is that, I'm the only Ron in the company, but so many people like to call me by my first and last name, which I just think is funny. Ron Sparkman. I'm like, Ron Sparkman. I'm Ron, <laughs> but I still, I just, I, I think it's funny. You know, that it's, it just, it rolls yeah, off the tongue, man. The tongue. I get it. <laughs> but yeah, Emily's awesome. She's actually uh, one of the people that's been working with analytics and stuff, um, working pretty closely as we've been trying to figure out all the cool social media stuff we've been doing on Space Foundation, man, keeping those numbers ticking up. So, uh, awesome. Nice Emily. Yeah, then uh, Kay says, hi, Steven. Oh, she said, cool. Oh, hi, Steven. Cool. Right. Hello. Super cool. I don't mean to. about the comment at the back? Or the following star, I should say. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. Oh, star emoji. <laughs> Uh, tell us about this galaxy we're looking at here, Stephen. Which one is this? Where are we at? Ah, uh, what am I looking? This is the Hickson, right? Oh, it is. Right? Yeah, it's a Hickson. Hickson fifty? No, Hickson. I don't remember. Um, <laughs> I was trying to figure it out before you asked me that. Uh, I put this on we the list. Him finally. But I just put the NGC on there. I can't remember the. Uh, oh. The, NGC 3190 is, I believe, the bigger one in there. So let me like that. 3190? Yeah. And Leo. Yeah. So, um, oh, it's part. this is a Leo Quartet. Instead of Leo uh -huh. Triplet, it's the Quartet. So one extra member in the band. Mm -hmm. And it is a Hickson. It is Hickson 44. Hickson 44. Beautiful. I love these Hicksons. Uh, and Camilla brings this up and says, according to Hickson, most compact groups contain a high fraction of galaxies having morphological or kinematical peculiarities. Hmm, that's a new word on me. Kinematical. I mean, I know what kinematical means. Kinematical. Kinematical. Kin kin yeah. kin kin kinematical. It sounds yeah. complicated. Asserting kinematics. They're moving around in weird ways. Ah. <laughs> That's what the problem They're is. All <laughs> stuff. They're peculiar. They're, They're peculiar. peculiar. They're just a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we drive to those uh, galaxies? Joe Richard wants to know. I've got the weekend yeah. off. Let's take a drive, man. You're going to be driving yeah. a long way, Joe, unless About you can drive in 80 some something place. million light years. So, you know. Well, then there's the point of the math. I want to take a look at them like. If you want, if you want to take a drive to those galaxies, would be to take a drive out to some nice dark skies and like, it's it's going to be a oh, trip yeah. to go on. That's for sure. That's true. You could take a weekend trip out to some dark skies with a nice big telescope and go straight up to those yeah. those so galaxies. It, it feels like a journey if you're in the right place and you know where where to look for sure. Absolutely, yeah. Riley says, Hi, "Steven, man, Steven, you are popular tonight, man. Look at you <laughs> it, go. It's the voice is what it is. It's like hello, ladies. It's, like, Let's talk astronomy." It's, I did the math all, how long it would take to drive here. Uh, at, at, 60, at 60 miles per hour, it'd be um, 8.33 times 10 to the 18th power uh, hours. So um, it's 18 zeros 18. there. Which is a comparable Eight. number to how many stars there are in the universe. <laughs> pretty, <laughs> much, pretty much. I mean, like, yeah. like It would be that type, that many hours just to get that's to that. That's a lot of hours. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of zeros in there. 18 zeros. Yeah. Hello, Stacy <laughs> Dawkins. Uh, we are doing well. I'm doing well. I know probably Steven's doing pretty good, and uh, Ron's doing pretty good down there. Doing pretty good. Okay. It's, it's good. <laughs> Going good. He says he's from Dhaka, Bangladesh. Oh, nice. welcome. I think I said that right. Uh, Z is always uh, hanging out with us. Sorry, Ron. I talked over you there. No, just saying it's definitely somewhere that's on my list one day, man. I've heard great things about Bangladesh. I know I say that a lot when people mention it, but I'm pretty much interested in going everywhere on the planet that I can. <laughs> Absolutely. I have what is that galaxy? I was told, uh, oh, you shouldn't go there. has been awesome. So I can only imagine the places I don't really know that much about. <laughs> <laughs> it's a kinematically peculiar galaxy is what that is. Yeah, that's that's a kin kinematic, yeah. Is, yeah. That, uh, is that 3187 right there, or is that a different The big one, one? is um... – Whatever the one the I said one. It was earlier, yeah, uh, the bright, 30, the, 3190. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's definitely got some kind of a had some kind of a run in with another galaxy. I mean, look at those tidal tails streaming off of it. Yeah, that one's uh, seventy nine million light years away. That one right there that you're pointing at. The big one to the yeah. left of it is uh, seventy nine. So I bet you a merger happened very recently between those two, sort of yeah, passing through each other. Look at that tidal tell on that that dark lane on that big one. That's awesome. I mean, it just are the you know, almost like the sombrero. It has that nice dark lane cutting through the the bright part of the galaxy. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely. Let me make it a little brighter, maybe if I can, without blowing it all completely. S Steve Olson says Elon Star Junk. I like that. Yeah. Uh, Spencer cool. says we're. We're on the Gulf of Yuhu, which is how I describe our beaches down here in Southeast Texas. You don't want to swim there. It's like dirty Yuhu. 
Uh, there's enough oh. for everyone, he says. <laughs> Look at these little background galaxies. Look at this Ooh. guy. And then there's that's one over a, here. And a, yeah, man. There's that's lots a nice of little guys. Design, dude. Man. Man, I'll have to come that, back and, and image this a lot deep, more deeply. I like this That area. one's so faint that uh, it's not even on Sky Safari, dude. It's not even a PGC galaxy. Maybe you maybe wow. just discovered a new galaxy. Probably not. I'm sure someone's Probably taking a deep not. exposure of this area. <laughs> this is only been seven minutes, so yeah. But still, pretty uh, darn cool. Absolutely. Jeff wants to know what program you're using, and this is uh, 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 SharpCap. SharpCap. If you look on the top there, SharpCap. Sharp Cap. And you can see also my camera name there. <laughs> Make it yeah. bigger. It's a little bit better. I don't know if it's obscured by something, though, online, so uh, it's kind of hard to tell. I think. All right, well, let's let's go. Um, I don't know, sixty-three and sixty-four, some good ones. Uh, we could do the Hickson fifty-five or sixty-one. Oh, fifty-five, the worm, the worm. Fifty-five, the worm. Yeah, and that's not that. a Dennis Rodman joke. Oh, that's that's a guy right there. <laughs> Got some. I knew that would trigger Ron. <laughs> <laughs> That's some stories about Dennis. <laughs> I bet you do. You should have oh. him on your show, Ron, for sure. Oh, uh, I haven't talked to him in a long time. I've only met him once. I've got a lot more friends that have shared their stories because he was he was more likely to pop up in a club in South Florida than he was, you know, anywhere else. But that would be an interesting one to get him on here. I mean, dude, look at you know. I think it'd still be cool to get on uh, to get uh, uh, Robert Patrick on here one night. Uh, Richard Patrick, sorry. Yeah, uh, Richard. I mean, his brother would be cool too, but actually, I think his brother passed away, didn't he? Oh. Did he? Yeah. One of those things where we're going off the subject again, but um, I think it'd be super cool to have him come on and like, but that's, that guy might be a little out there. He's like, how much of the couch? I'm here for the couch. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so I don't know which couch you're referring to, Nick, but uh, we're going to keep looking for that for that ad. Maybe you're on the wrong uh, feed. I think maybe Ron might be selling a couch. <laughs> he's, on, he's on the right feed. I think Ron was selling a couch, if you're really interested. It's a futon, but uh, hey, you know. <laughs> I've, got, I've got two futons for sale if you really want one. Uh, Hickson says peculiar. Steven says weird. Elbow cough. Hashtag hey, elbow cough. You got you got to bring it down a bit so people understand. <clears throat> you know, <it's, clears throat> is that is that what elbow cough is? Where you like? <clears throat> <clears throat> well, you have to cough Ooh. that way now, right? You know, COVID <clears throat> and stuff. <clears throat> elbow to the elbow to the face. No. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, Joe says, have y'all ever played Universe Sandbox 2 or Kerbal Space yes. Program? I have played both of those, but what? Kerbal is my favorite. I was just playing Kerbal right before this. Were you really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've seen the I've seen I've heard so much about Kerbal Space Program. People keep asking me about it. I haven't played it yet. Oh, I've Ron. Universe Sandbox 2, though. Ron, your your life is over when you download uh Kerbal Space Program, man. Just go and start yeah. assembling rockets and then launch and yeah, them explode yeah. and like the golf course and they'll hit like you. at first you'll think it's impossible and then you'll start to get the hang of it and you'll just love it. You know, okay. all these yeah. crazy yeah. missions. Thanks about it. We're we're trying to see if we can get to the point if we've got somebody that's trained up enough. because uh, we've got the AGI lab at the Discovery Center and we have done like Minecraft Saturdays that we would do like flip alternate every Saturday. So one Saturday would be Minecraft. The next Saturday would be Kerbal and going back and forth and just having that like the open day. So come in and play it for you know what, a couple extra bucks and buy one of the limited seats that we have to play it. That'd be cool. nice. Um, it's big TVs, man. I mean, <laughs> it's a nice setup. I mean, AGI paid for <laughs> What's that? <Nice>. Tell you? <laughs> 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 no said. Thanks, AGI. No said. Uh, so do you have a one? This distance. is two billion light years. Two billion to one thousand nine hundred million light years. Yes. I know that sounds ridiculous. One thousand nine hundred million, but that is one point nine billion. So one let's just point nine billion billion. Yes. Yes, girl. It's time. Yeah. Virgin <laughs> alone is over six trillion light years away. Oh really? Oh, that's a lot. Sorry, yeah. that's pretty um, bright for two billion. It is, like, yeah, yeah. 
Now, like you, you can is, see this in the scope. That is the galaxy there. Uh, I believe the the big flat one on the bottom, uh, or in the middle bottom. The, so second. the second one out from top. I think that one's uh, one point nine. Uh, the big one in the middle, the uh, the elliptical there. Yeah. Uh, it says 760. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm looking at here. And all we're seeing of that one is the core. There's mm. uh, it's showing an elongation there that we're not seeing. Uh, the one above, uh, let's see, the one above that. Most of these are all 700 million light years away. So let me locate the one that's two billion. It's nuts. 700. Yeah, 760, 770. So it's the second. It's the it's the the big one. Right there, that is a monster galaxy. Wow! I mean, so it's and in it's the background. Happen, right? It's happenstance. Yeah, the rest of those galaxies are all together, and that one is just oh, kind of three crazy. times the distance, right? Seven, four, yeah, yeah, something like that. Close to three times the distance there. Man, that's crazy. That's yeah. I mean, that that might be the most distant galaxy I've actually resolved as like a, a galaxy. You know. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe the, I, that maybe I have others, but I didn't know the distance. Like that little guy before, he probably was like a billion, but two billion, and he can, and in just a few seconds of exposure, yeah, I could see What's it. What's this one, Stephen? This is Hickson fifty-five or the worm. Wow! Can you send me <laughs> yeah. this photo? Oh, sure, I can send you it. Awesome. I'll send you it later. Saved it. Yeah, that's a beautiful image, though. But to to imagine that. Every galaxy you see besides that second one from the bottom there is all together. They're all sort of doing their own thing. And that monster galaxy is is so much further away. It's, it's not close enough, in my opinion, Stephen, to be any kind of gravitational lensing. I don't I don't think the, those two galaxies on top of it are close enough to really be. But maybe. Nah, I don't think there's any lensing at work here. Um they're too cool. far away, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think they're too far. I mean, they gotta be really close for lensing to uh, really take effect. Um, so probably not, but you know, that'd be cool. I was trying to look up bright examples of gravitational lensing aside from the twin quasar. Uh, there are uh, not a lot of bright examples. <laughs> yeah, ex absolutely. And uh, Jane had a question about sharp cap with an AHA filter. You're just on one of your luminance filters, oh, right? Yep, luminance. That's why it's so dark luminance. in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any light. The light you're seeing is on, on my face on the, the video cam is just from the uh, computer screen <laughs> with a red filter Which, on it. So, there he is right there. The one yeah. thing I'm do is that even on the program when the hand pops up, even the hand is in red. Like, yeah, I, I, that's, that's a silly little detail, but I mean, for it's just something that I hadn't noticed until last time. Like, <laughs> great, that's so awesome. Like, of course, it's in red. It has to be. But <laughs> yeah, that's Benjamin cool. says uh, is, is reporting that, you know, the great thing about the lockdown for him is that uh, there's much fewer aircraft in the, his view of the sky. Yeah. So that's great. That's yeah. cool. We don't really have was, aircraft here anyway. So but yeah, that's yeah. Great not not a whole lot of uh, options down there in West Texas if something happens to your engine. So not a lot of people like to go down that way. <laughs> it's a yeah. dark abyss on the ground, and you want to try to stay away from those in an aircraft. Flying at yeah. night is very strange. What is that galaxy over there, Stephen? That little uh, lone ranger off to the left. Yeah, I don't know. I um, I'm not really sure. Is I it? Uh... Hmm. Oop. Huh. This guy that could be that could be PGC something or other. PGC yeah. three five six six two six six two. That's what I'm seeing as well. That's it. Yeah. That's the one. Uh, I don't know if this is a request, Bob, or is is this a request? That, I don't know. Uh, was that Do one you guys I did earlier? It has a space and then it's punctuation, so I would assume this is a request. <laughs> uh, yeah, we didn't look at that yet. Um, sure, we could do I'm that. I'm just messing with you, Bob. <laughs> yeah. uh, I like Bob. He's a good friend of mine from Star Parties Galore. Too bad I'd be seeing him out at TSP, probably. If uh, And we'd be going next week, man. I'd be getting ready to get in the camper and get out there. It's just sad times, man. I'm going to miss all my TSP family, including Steven. I, I finally get to hang out with him in reality. 
like yeah. once a year basically uh and we're being robbed of that so i'm not i'm not happy and and you know the yoohoo is not making things better <laughs> <laughs> yeah it sucks i i miss it you know having having like-minded people around uh, absolutely yeah. are those stars or galaxies those were galaxies, galaxies uh camilla yeah now there are stars in that image that he's got there but you know those are uh fine points but then you see that the the little worm asterism or I, it can't even it's like a galasterism you know galasterism, because it's like gal yeah. galast i think i just coined a new word that's a uh, cool word i'm using that galasterism pretty awesome word really <laughs> what's I mean, I don't think I've heard that before. I think we, I think you got it, man. I think you nailed it. Galastricism. It's right. a glasterism. Yeah, it's an asterism of galaxies, right? So there you go. Somebody, somebody, write that down in a book somewhere. Hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> Where's it's John Reed when you need him? Forever saved on the internet now, right? Dave, David David Iker. Yeah. <laughs> write a book. Uh, Matt says this is cool. Thank you, Matt. We appreciate you hanging out with us. Appreciate all y'all hanging out with us as always, man. We really appreciate y'all. Uh, sharing the feeds so we can get this astronomy out to more people. Uh, we appreciate y'all following us on Instagram. I know um, Steven's on Instagram and obviously um, Ron down there is on Instagrams. So you got to follow us. I know the Instagrams are steady flowing by. Uh, so give us a follow if you're on there. We'd love to have you. Hello, Gloria from New Jersey. What's the name again? I think uh, that last one was Hickson 55, Brad, but this one, Stephen is what? What is this? NGC 3310. What, uh, oh. what the request was. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Bob. 3310, yep. Ursa Major. Ursa Major. Big face on spiral, looks like. 55 million light years away. Look at that. It almost reminds me of a planetary nebula with some fun stuff going on around it. You know? It almost has that that shape. Yeah, yeah, it's got a really bright, interesting core. A very nice spar. And it's got fainter stuff coming off of it. Um, but very faint coming off. It may take a while to really bring that out. That's a good one, though. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, let's watch this one yeah. for a while for sure. Uh, Hickson Galaxy Compact Groups, I think is what HGC stands for, are dominated by dark matter. I think that's true for our galaxies, or all galaxies, right, Stephen? They're pretty well dominated. Yep. It's very, uh, dark very matter. rare to find one that is less than 50% dark matter. The most, most galaxies are mostly dark matter, um, but some of them especially so. You know, like, like uh, especially you find that um, galaxy clusters tend to have an overabundance of dark matter, and it's actually up to 90 or more percent of the mass but there are some exceptions to that rule right so i heard you say most and there are some i've, I've been seeing stuff come out about dark matterless galaxies or yes. at least where they're deficient. very cutting edge topic in astronomy now and, and there are there's some paper like a, two years ago someone found a, they, they claimed to have found a galaxy with like less than five percent dark matter or basically none and then and then other studies kind of tore it apart but uh, oh <laughs> yeah, so so. it's controversial Ooh, I yeah, love yeah, it. yeah yeah absolutely I love so it's like, you know, it's like uh astronomy tea you know like when they say spill in the the tea you know that's like a term that these youngsters are using these days whatever you young Spike whippersnappers tea. are saying yeah i'm I, spilling I tea know. so i we're spilling the cosmos tea there. I don't. I don't hang out with. There's no one else of my age around, so I don't know what. <laughs> what well, I'm filling you in. Spilling the tea is definitely a term. And Camilla uh, says this is my favorite source of astronomy, and I think she means us, oh, and that means a lot you. to us. So thank you so much, uh, Camilla. Awesome. You you're the best. Uh, Stacy says link please, so I can stop trying to create a watch party. Thanks. Oh, well, man, you can find us everywhere, Stacy. We're on uh, the Stardom, uh, at Stardom Facebook page. We're at the Deep Sky Dude Facebook page. Deep Sky Dude on YouTube. Stardom on YouTube. Uh, where else can you find us, Ron? Uh, you, we are also on Twitch because those are the only ones that I could get to work. But we have also been. You can find us on uh, on Stardom Space on Twitter slash Periscope. We've been there before. And we also have the possible the goal is eventually to do them all at once, but we have to. We're gonna have to put three different streaming services together. But the mm -hmm. goal is eventually next to get TikTok, Reddit, and what was the other one? Instagram. 
Instagram. Getting the three of the, the three coolest ones right now we can't get to yet, but we are going to do that one day. One day there's going to be like 15,000 people watching because we're going to get Reddit and Instagram. <laughs> and it's going to be on like popcorn because I can like get up to 30. I can attach it to 30 different ones now on, on uh, Restream because I upped it this month. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can get the stuff we've never heard of. Like, we can get this really, I mean, seriously, like, the options for new ones are really kind of, let's let's add a channel. Let's just have some fun here. Okay. We have. I'll start streaming to another one for, for no reason. Uh, we can go on VK Live, D Live, Daily Motion, Kakao TV, Neighbor TV, Nemo TV, V Live, Good Game, Smash Cast, Hua, uh, Zonki, Billy Billy, TV, Mob Crush, Cyber Game, Major League Gaming, Dow U, Live Edu, Vaughn Live, Instagab, Breakers. <laughs> Fabers.tv, Picarto, OK.ru, uh, FCT Live, Steam, Tele2. And actually, if we want to, we could Wait, create Steam? a custom stream from this and send it back into – we could just do, go super meta and, and put it wow. back into, uh, back in the stream yard again. I we, think I heard of, like, two of those. I know. we I haven't either. But that, that's the cool thing about it. So they're always up to something. <laughs> uh, Brad, no, this is not a supernova according to what I'm looking at. This, uh, yeah, that, he's that later on. Yeah. Oh, what, yeah, he what said later on he realized it's not one. Yeah. Oh, okay, like okay. Like Sorry. Cool. Sorry. Yeah, I'm way behind on the comments here because you guys are awesome. Y'all are chatting it up with us. We appreciate that. And again, if we are missing your comments, that's probably because you're on a source that isn't feeding us those comments. So if, if we haven't paid you any love, find us on another source and then uh, throw us some love, and we'll we'll throw you on the live stream. So you'll have no choice but to have your your name and your picture broadcast to the internet. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, like Jane here, uh, I miss. I may have missed uh, missed it, but what is the diameter of your telescope, Stephen? Sixteen inches. Oh, I should have stopped the exposure. There, Sixteen <laughs> inches. I'll leave that up. <laughs> I think those make cooler images, though. Sometimes, man. It's yeah. Like speed. Matt, Matt says, "What's M60. up, everyone?" Oh, Matt. Next. Sorry. M60. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Adam Corville says, do you guys observe any quasars at the McDonald Observatory? You know, we did the double quasar last time, which was pretty cool. Uh, but if there's time tonight, we might add a quasar in if we can. We might, we might uh, yeah, if you know of a good one, if there's a different one up. This, there's 3C273 in Virgo, um, but it's just star-like. Um, there yeah. aren't many that are actually interesting to look at. Uh, but in terms of this science, yeah, we observe them all the time. Hello, Marcy. How are you doing? Uh, Camilla says you should make a movie. Hey, we could. We could make a movie. That's the goal. Well, at least the impression. At least what? A TV show. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That is, that is the goal for me right now. Yep. And then uh, Joe says galasterism. Yes, I like it. Uh, there it is. So now we have. We can now take a screenshot of that. So it's it's set in stone. Mm -hmm. I I first it. Ron and Steven seconded it, and then the uh, the board voted on it. Now it is an astronomical term. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, we almost learned. Uh, yeah, so it says three, uh, 3310 has some interesting arms. Absolutely did, man. Absolutely. I read ahead, and, and Joe Richards' comment killed me. I just wanted to uh -oh. say that D-Live might not appreciate it if you were on him. <laughs> <laughs> D-Live? I don't know who D Live is. I don't know what where. Things that I said, but it's says, you know, a joke of, you know. <laughs> DJ, DJ D, D Live. <laughs> don't be on me, bro. Get off me, man. It's funny. Uh, Jane says, yes, these views are great. We appreciate it. And a rose emoji. Thank you, Jane. We appreciate you wow. hanging out with us on a random Tuesday night where uh, we've got a guy. Our at the big night. Tuesday nights are. What is it? Tuesday nights are kind of becoming our thing. Yeah, yeah, it is kind of accidentally. It's great. Yeah, yeah, really neat. And he says, "Sorry, I got here late." It's all good. You can, hey, uh, yeah. There's no, there's no late in space, right? It's all we're all different, you know, light years away from each other. So there we go. Uh, Jeff says, "I just uh, thought if we could travel 186,000 miles per second, the speed of light, uh, the G force would destroy our body." We have some work to do before galaxy hopping. Yeah, of course, you can never get to the speed of light yep. because you need more energy than the universe has in it to propel you as a mass 
yeah. uh, a mass of things that fast. So, but you can get within a percentage of the speed of light. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, once and, you yeah. get speed of light, once you're doing that, then everything like comes to a stop, which is crazy because it is yeah. morbidly, it's terribly slow. If you really think about the how far out we can go and how far out we see, and what is it? We're 96 billion light years across. 186,000 yeah. miles a second is nothing. Like it's just oh, it's yeah. creeping along. It really is when you think about it. So it's it's insanely slow in galactic yeah. terms. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, really. So, oh, hey, Joe Martinez. Awesome. We got to have you, him on one day. Oh yeah, yeah. He was here last time uh, when we had uh, Greg Bragg from Celestron Telescopes. Oh, yep. Uh, Joe, I watched. Joe says, yeah. "Yeah, awesome, man. Thank you for watching yeah. that." Uh, Joe yeah. says, "Loving it." Here one day, man. For sure, Joe's. Well, we should. The first person I ever heard of doing sidewalk astronomy. I mean, quite literally, the name of his organization is Jupiter Joe's Sidewalk Astronomy, and he does Very it. Cool. So awesome. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. We got to definitely get Joseph on the show one night. That'd be fun. Uh, Brad Sloan says, "Will mention Celestron Star Sense Beginner Telescope, real game changer for beginners. Absolutely, that Celestron Star Sense uh, is amazing. I've got a video coming out on that pretty soon." I'm behind on videos because uh, music and uh, some stuff. So uh, I've got some videos coming on that, though. That thing is amazing. The Celestron Star Sense. Uh, it, you know, Joseph did a video on that actually, too. We talked about that on the last stream. But uh, uh, Stephen, tell me where we're at real quick before we get to too many more comments. Sure. Or, uh, we don't. We're on M60, and it's a big elliptical <laughs> galaxy, part of the Virgo cluster. So it's like. 60 something million light years away um and there's this guy here and uh he is doomed he's falling into m60 so m60 is a big elliptical galaxy meaning it's basically got so big from cannibalizing other galaxies and uh he's its next meal basically uh so mm -hmm. this one's gonna fall in and merge together somewhere in this field one of these little star-like objects is actually a tiny core of another galaxy that got cannibalized and is now i think it's this little speck um, it's now one of the most dense galaxies. Uh, for a while, it held number one. I think it's we've since found some more, so it's like number three or four now. Um, but it's just basically mm -hmm. the remnant core of a larger galaxy, and the rest of it got stripped up and is now part of M60. Um, so, yeah, really mergers interesting. Mergers will one. do that. Mergers, yeah, yeah. mergers, mergers and acquisitions. And so you can see actually the core of that little galaxy down to the left is actually biased more towards the uh the other galaxy a little bit is at least that's the way it appears it looks like that one side is a little smushed maybe yeah it could be it's definitely uh getting, getting pretty close they are physically close to each other uh yeah, they may be like a little bit behind from our point of view or in front of but um yeah they they are going to become one great big galaxy i'm getting yeah. uh 17 megaparsecs on both exactly 17 so 56 million light years is what that equates to yeah, uh, which yeah. is there. I mean, that's a good distance away, but they're right on top of each other. You're right. That's we're t we're getting the snapshot right before the galaxy falls into the other one, and there's a big mess of awesomeness that happens, and then they'll settle down into. And that you said that's an elliptical on top, right? Um, yeah, yep. In sixty, yep. Yeah, so that's already been you know multiple mergers. Mm -hmm. uh you know several several mergers and then the little spiral galaxy below it is just like you said another meal, another meal. that galaxy likes Next to eat line. man yeah and it's in a crowded <laughs> neighborhood it's clearly it's clearly had a lot already it it could probably stop you know it maybe <laughs> it needs to chill out a little bit those those galaxies were for everyone uh <laughs> Ron Sartman, you were muted <laughs> i am now oh, you're there not. you go we got there you go. oh okay i was like i'm in my bed <laughs> um I want to give a couple shout outs here real quick. Let's see. Where was he at? Hold, yeah. on, hold on. Where'd he go? Uh, Matt Smith's here, and he is an incredible astrophotographer, hypernova, um, nova oh. with a zero instead of O, and uh, the back half of his name on Instagram does incredible stuff. But look him up, just great work. And Marcy, Marcy's watching from out in uh, Alaska, uh, awesome educator, uh, does some really cool stuff with uh, Jamie Suckle and Lee Rich out from, uh, from One Orbit. So yeah, she's awesome. awesome. She hops on like every live stream I do, man. I love Marcy's a very supportive friend, man. She's great people. And also doing awesome stuff, man. Teaching teaching the kids even in this crazy time. Yeah, and that's that's you know, that's the goal for all of us is to keep uh, keep each other distracted, keep each other educated, keep our minds 
working. So when all this is over and we can go back to being way too close to each other, uh, we'll have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Joseph said he's going to be streaming at 4 a.m. That's a trooper right there, man. Basically, yeah, when we go uh, off, he'll be getting yeah, on. It's a 4 a.m. Wow. Eastern time for him. Um, which I mean, ah. 4 a.m. is 4 a.m. It doesn't matter where you are, but it's so um, it's really not that late for some of us over here that are a couple hours away from. Gotcha. We've definitely been up at 2 a.m. before doing some streaming stuff. So, uh, Joe, depending on whether or not I go immediately to sleep or I'm up all night, I'll probably be on there watching. <laughs> he says, "Oh well, thanks, Ron." Uh, Andy says, "Was reliving my youth using my Swift 839 60 millimeter refractor." Now that's a relic right there. That's very cool. Uh, there's another Tie Fighter Galaxy. Look at that. Which yeah, one is this? One. M90. M90. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. M91. M91. It's just so, next door, though, right? It's next door. Yeah. From M91. Oh, yeah, I went is, the wrong way on the software. Definitely a barred spiral with, yeah, 51. definitely a lot more tie fightery. Yeah, kind of a bit of turn. Mm -hmm. He's in a left bank. Or unless he's going away from us, he's in a right bank. <laughs> Doing Maybe. a little, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Such a distinctive we'll sound. <laughs> Somebody take just oh that little audio section and make it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Jeff says, yep, a drop in the ocean as far as speed is. That's right. Yes. Do mm. we talk about a <laughs> I think a long time ago, someone requested uh, the Intergalactic Wanderer. That yeah. What? That sounds like a Stephen King book. It does <laughs> it really does? It should be like a, a like a country song from the highway, man. Like right at the end, we're gonna get a little Willie Nelson on the track. Who do you remember who that was? Uh, uh, Stephen? I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Yeah, it was, and I I I, I, I do miss <laughs> comments, guys, and I apologize, but um, there's yeah, so the interview. Yeah, let's do that. It's up now. Okay. It wasn't. It wasn't quite high enough when he asked. Um, nice. I forget where I was at now. Here, warp, warp space says, uh, or, or Brad says, warp space no speed limit for space. Yeah, according to Star Trek, that is a hundred percent true. Uh, Triskin says, or Tris, Triskillian says, uh, traveling Dune style would be much better. Yeah, On giant that's, webs. Uh, yeah, the, the brain worms. thoughts of giant worms, isn't it? Or something like that. Yeah. Oh, I had it wrong. I was setting, not rising. I had it, my map flipped around. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's over by Gemini there. Okay. Yeah, 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 that's right. The Wizard Nebula, where is that? You know, somebody told me that's about that the other day. And it's like, yeah, it's like in the, it's like a, the pencil nebula or something. I forget what it was. I, or it's the cone or something. Like some people call it the wizard, and I've just recently started hearing it be called that. I think it's it's named something else. Uh, so, uh, the wizard is a nickname. Nicknames on nicknames on nicknames. Yeah, uh, they all have nine hundred names. All these things. Eddie did. Eddie asked for it. Eddie T. Oh, Eddie T. Okay, sorry, Eddie. We'll try to do that next time for sure for you. Daisy says hi, guys. Love these streams. Uh, you guys draw in a great crowd and offer so much interesting information. That is so sweet of you, Daisy. Thank you so much. You mean those two for uh, interesting information? I crack jokes and just try to absorb as much as I can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I'll get your there. Input is appreciated, Ron. Uh, yeah, I have, I have zero, zero, zero problem admitting that. Like, I get to just be the nerd that's learning stuff all the time. Yeah, Bring Ron a lot is of the character. resident sponge. Yeah. <laughs> He just absorbs everything he can. He's just the yeah. resident sponge. So, I mean, that's the best thing to do, man. Between between this, this stream and then hopping on the one with Dustin, uh, that that uh, gives some picks does, man. It's just absorbing everything from the. That's more gear and imaging and actually like what happens after you take the image. And then here's more of the you know here's the, the actual the using it. Which is funny too because it's generally using the same equipment, just you know sharing that information in a different way, which I dig. Is this the Intergalactic Wanderer, NGC 24, 2419? 
though. Yeah, so it's a little globular cluster, uh, kind yeah. of a faint one, um, big ball of stars, uh, and um, how far away is it? It's, it's pretty far. 270,000 light years. Yeah, that's a lot closer than anything else we've looked at tonight, but that's very far for a globular because yeah. most of the globular clusters are in orbit around the Milky Way, and they're maybe 30 to 50 to 100,000 light years away. Um, yep. This one isn't. It's you know, nearly 300,000 light years. And so it's kind of... Um, it is still in orbit around the Milky Way, but it got its name because they thought maybe it wasn't. Like, it's just going way off course. Yeah, um, yeah so far away, right. Yeah. Yeah. So it would it's it's a rather interesting globular purely because of its its distance and it's just like how did it get so you know uh, so far away? Um, Which it could have just been slingshotted, I guess. Maybe at some point, you know, just got too close to the core, maybe, and got flung out on a kind of eccentric orbit. You said maybe. if it's in if it's in an orbit, it's just a really elongated or high orbit, I guess, huh? Uh, I don't know the shape or the parameters of the orbit. Um, I don't it either, takes yeah. Several billion years to complete one orbit, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. I don't know. It's a beautiful globular, though. And I mean, for being as far away as it is, it's got to be a monster. It's oh, just yeah. A monster yeah. complex of stars. I mean, is it bigger than uh, Omega Centauri, or is it, you know, I don't, I don't know much about this thing, which is great that we're looking at it. Uh, yeah, it, it is, it is one of the more bit bright, the more massive and brighter clusters intrinsically, you know, rather than, uh, like it's, I don't know if it's as big as Omega Centauri. I don't think so, but, um, it's definitely up there. It's definitely bigger than a lot of the more famous ones that just are happen to be closer. So yeah, it's a monster. Yeah. And I'm Another reading monster. on Sky Safari Pro here. It says it's nearly twice as far out as the large Magellanic cloud at this great distance. Mm -hmm. It takes up three takes uh three billion years to make one trip around the galaxy wow. uh so that's three billion years one trip right so one year of this thing around the galaxy is three billion years that's insane um and they, it was erroneously named this uh because it was believed to not be in orbit around the milky way but it is uh in orbit around the milky way uh and it says it ranks with omega centauri and m54 in absolute brightness wow yeah, uh, which is crazy. So it's about the same size, I guess, same luminosity as Omega Centauri. It's just much, much further away. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't, I don't see where it says that it's any bigger. But again, I'm just looking inside Sky Safari Pro. Uh, but it is, you know, strikingly does remind me of Omega Centauri with that. There's not a really dense tight core. It's right. sort of a, it gets tight and then it stays that same sort of homogeneous star count all the way to the core, right? Yeah, it is not as concentrated. There is, there is, I believe, an outer sort of halo here. Of, these are members of probably of the cluster too, some of these yeah. trimmer ones. But yeah, it's not as ultra compact as like M M3 or M15, some other globulars uh, that are... Um, you know, a lot more concentrated. So it hasn't undergone what we call basically a, a core collapse, which applies to globular clusters as well. Um, yeah. And Eddie says it's uh, 360 light years in diameter. Uh, I wonder, I wonder how big Eddie, could you find out how big Omega Centauri is in diameter? Uh, I don't know how big ah. Omega is. But most of, Oh, so it is bigger. Yeah, yeah, like M M13, a lot of the other famous globs are like 150 or 160. So it is. this is, yeah, it's a monster. Huh? I'm just going to make a note of this real quick. Tonight is probably the quickest we've ever got through all the comments, and it took us 90 minutes to catch yeah. up. Yeah. I saw, I still there. We never got to the bottom, and it still <laughs> took us 90 minutes wow. to catch everybody. <laughs> Yeah, that's the first we time to, all night we caught up. <laughs> we tend to we tend to yammer a lot, so I mean, yeah, apparently, we, apparently we the people will like us though. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we had that uh, one that one of the one of the nights that Tony did it. I think between all the different platforms, we ended up with somewhere between like five to eight hundred comments between all of them. It was nuts. Yeah, 
Mm-hmm. Tony brings the crowd, that's for sure. Once Tony, Tony, I think that's what everybody's saying hi to Steven for. I think he switched it to Steven tonight from, from Will yeah. Baggins. Yeah, instead <laughs> of saying, uh, say, tell Will you brought your you who is, he's like, tell Steven to say hello. Oh. So, <laughs> that must have been because it. There's, there's, uh, there's one right uh, there's there. Hello, Steven. Yep. Hello, Steven. <laughs> hello. Nice to Beth, see you. Beth Bolden, there you go. Been a long time. Uh, <laughs> Jeff says, uh, love the NASA hat. Will, where'd you get it? This was Kennedy. Space Center in Florida, Texas, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wait, what? Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, wait, wait, no, back Florida, it up. Of it's what? It's what? what? What was that? Back that up. Florida, Texas. Florida, te- everywhere in America is in Texas. It's just like outside of Texas. Well, if right. you live in, if you live in Texas, which is ridiculous. Guess we'll try to break a thousand. That's Tony. <laughs> did you did you have do you have oh, a hat on too, like, Ryan? What was do that? A, do you have a NASA hat on too? I don't have a NASA hat on. I have a Stardom hat on. That oh, is look at that! That's on the Stardom uh, Stardom swag store. That's on Spreadshirt. Spreadshirt. Wait, shop Spreadshirt dot com backslash Stardom uh, dash swag. There we go. That one's hard to remember. They need to let us come up with some things, but yeah. So yeah. Well, there you go. You can get some Stardom swag if you you're into it. Too. Boom. Oh, nice. Decked out. Drip. Oh, I, 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 I missed it up both times. <laughs> it's twice, which is great. <laughs> like, every time I click the button, I'm, I'm already too late. That's the way it goes. So so that, that, that globular cluster we just looked at is 100 light years across bigger than Omega Centauri, which is one that, I mean, everybody loves to look at Omega Centauri because it's so massive. And it just fills your telescope. And that thing is just, it's just that much further away. It's, it's incredible. We're learning all kinds of cool things tonight. They appear to have some, some distinct composition and, and history behind them. Uh, so the, the exact formation of globular clusters is a little debated, but, but they do, they do seem to be kind of their own, kind of a thing in, in general um you generally like we think galaxies form and and maybe what's left over for globulars in orbit around it so they can you can, yeah they, they have some similarities to like dwarf galaxies but yeah probably a little so bit. I, uh, a little thing i've heard steven and maybe you can correct me on if they've debunked this yet or not that there was a study out that was uh claiming that Globular clusters might be the the absolute cores of smaller galaxies that were assimilated into bigger ones long, long ago. Uh, and the reason yeah. they were saying that was because some of them have black holes uh, in the center, which I think yeah. M13 is one. So a few of them, yes. Omega Centauri is the most famous example of that. It probably was the core of a larger galaxy. However, we also think that globulars can be forming uh, at, uh, in orbit or after the main galaxy is already formed. So not necessarily is this right. the answer. Yeah. So there could be like two types of globulars where, yeah, they're just a massive area of gas, you know, and dust formed a globular or yeah. So way, way back uh, early galaxies that were eating each other up just couldn't quite consume the whole mass of the galaxy and they ended up around. So there's probably, uh, both are happening at the same time, uh, to quote Forrest Gump, unfortunately. Yeah, but yeah. it's a little bit A, a little bit of B, yeah. Uh, this is M64, guys. This is the Black Eye Galaxy. Oh, it's an amazing galaxy. Yeah. The what? The Black Eye <laughs> Galaxy. The Black <laughs> Eye, as in I. Ron? Ron? Yeah. <laughs> no, but okay, so I, I want to make a note of this, and you have changed nothing, but the image you're getting right here is far superior, it seems to me, than the last couple of times we've streamed M64. Uh, this up, looks, I think. yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Gorgeous. What is it? M64. Messy. No, 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 no. What, is, what did you say, Stephen? I'm sorry, Will. Uh, well, last oh. time, last time the moon was up. The last time That's we did this. What it was yeah. That is absolutely stellar. Now again, what? Now, Will, you said what was this one again? Sorry. Uh, it's M64, Messier 64. Look at like just the, that's the, I think that's the most depth we've seen on anything. Like just that is, 
<laughs> uh oh, Tony's sent out a sent out a post again. I think I, I saw that. I was about to put it up. Yeah. <laughs> I see the first you, but <laughs> oh, we're gonna be sponsored by you by the end of this, fellas. So I, mean, I hope y'all have a Jack to be stoked by it. But you who <laughs> needs to come back for real. You who needs to come back for that like a decade, man. Like, yeah, you who needs to come back just like was that? Like, I want both of those, and it's time for them to come back. You and just, you just any- want it to be like the early 2000s forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we need a party rock. You know what I'm saying? We need a we need an LMFAO jam this summer. Yeah, yeah. some Smash oh. Mouth. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not, Smash Mouth. That was that yeah, was I way know. off from LMFAO. I don't know. Yeah, I know, but it's the era. But it, it was '90s, early 2000s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one was like the mid 2010s. The other one was like 1999. That's a yeah, that's era. Era. It just just all blended together for you, Stephen. You were too young anyway, right? <laughs> I don't know. That's a, the, 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 according to some people, they think that 2019 wasn't part of the or was a part of the decade or something stupid. People were saying that oh, they, like, yeah. or 2020 wasn't a part of the decade. It's not so, so, uh, who cares? Yeah, no, so technically, it's supposed <laughs> to be like because if you go one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like ten is supposed right. to be the end of it, right? So we're yeah, technically but, 2020 isn't supposed. To, that's what some people say. And then yeah. next year is actually the first year of the of the century. So you and know that would what? be true. That would be true if zero wasn't a legitimate integer, but it is. So, but was it a legitimate year? No, it didn't have to be because uh, it the, does. The year didn't exist. It. No, huh? yeah, like like yeah, it depends on where you define it, beginning and ending, or like yeah. when. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's stupid. I think this is you should just. It's tw- it's the 2020s. Let's just all agree and, that that's when it starts. And, stop. and decade it's only means the only definition of decade is just a 10 year span. So it's 85 to 95 could be a sure. decade. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, here's the question um, too: Is that do we want to all be behind that because 2020 sucked so bad? Let's not yes. let this be the start of the decade. Let's go <laughs> 2021 to 2030. <laughs> you know, and that is funny because we were having that it's argument. Count. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so just throw out the whole year, just the whole thing. Which is a which is a better program to use, sequence generator or sharp gap? So it depends on what you want to do. Um, if you're doing stuff like I'm doing right now, live streaming and and stacking live images, or or doing things like the planets and the moon, uh, sharp caps what you want. If you're trying to like take really deep exposures and a lot of them and plan out a night than Sequence Generator Pro. Uh, so uh, once this is over and I've, you know, we're done here and I start taking real deeper images, I'm going to switch to Sequence Generator. So I just use both, basically. Yeah. Sequence Generator, if you want to do like the sequence generation, right? Like doing yeah. luminances, reds, greens, blues, because, you know, you have to do all those different shots and then you have to do your darks and all that. And it yeah, basically if you want to set it all automate, up in there and do yeah. it. Yeah, and if I if I had the dome hooked up to the telescope, I could ride up a whole sequence in sequence generator and go to bed and come back in the morning, and it's all there. You know, it's like you can yeah. make it do literally everything for you if you if you have the equipment that will support that. Um, Absolutely. Let's take a couple more objects and then we'll call it a night. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's uh, let's uh press here. Leah, Leah Leah says she arrived with her Yahoo. Um, which uh, her and Lynette arrived with Yahoo as well, but then Lynette. Every all fairness, are you who now? Like, yeah, that's the way it's gonna go. Uh, but I'm serious. I I better get some YooHoo out of this. Like, you know, like at least get something right. No, it's, or, it's, uh, it's serious now. It's like every comment. <laughs> here's one. Here's one for you. Okay, uh, Stephen. PGC. Bob Snyder coming in with the hints here. Three six. Three, three, six, three, four. three six four six six. I gotta look it up just to see what it is. Yeah, I, I'm googling it right now. I don't remember which one that is. That's uh. Ooh. If it's one we've already done, you're disqualified. <laughs> I don't think you're we've can- done this one. <laughs> you're canceled. <laughs> we haven't done a lot of PG. Uh, okay, all this right, looks all right. Good. Get that. This yeah. Looks good. Yeah, yeah. This looks good. Let's say that. Okay, again. so Bob, your wish is our command, sir. Uh oh. Moving on out. Uh, why are the caps sharp? That sounds dangerous. It is. It's very dangerous. You will cut yourself. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Uh, Beth says, I brought the Yoohoo. Okay, I hope you brought enough for everybody again because we are all very thirsty here. 
I'm almost out of coffee and it's really kind of too late to be drinking more coffee. Uh, but Wendy said she brought some too. So Wendy, hello. Thank you. Uh, I have arrived with my Yahoo. Beth says there. She, see, correctly. Yeah. You can, you can see the, you can, I'm going to start calling. Well, I think he called them the minions, but I can call them like the Bendels or something. Like they're all part of his family. <laughs> the Bendels. It sounds like a band. I don't know. It does. Yeah. It's like, it's like a Partridge family kind of. Uh, Gary Boyle says, great outreach. Thank you, Gary. We appreciate you. Natalie says, I arrived with my Yoo-Hoo. Basically straight yeah. up right now. Look at that. So to tell you a little story about how this came up, uh, it was on one of my live, my, my lunar live streams that I did and Tony showed up and I think I was describing the water out here, uh, you know, at the coast. I live on the coast of Texas, basically between Texas and Louisiana. I'm like right there. Uh, and the water here is like, I describe it as you because it looks like dirty chocolate milk. It's got sticks and just like nasty seaweed in it. And, but it looks like you if you bottled it, you could probably sell it to thousands of un, unwitting people and they would drink it and immediately realize it's salt water. It's horrible down here. Um, and what's funny is because of that, oh and then I was like, "Yoohoo!" is such a horrible drink. And then people were like, ah, you know, <laughs> and um, so that was how that whole thing so started. started. Right there, buddy. Yeah, I, I got it. You started this fire. Sweeping, I'm just got to sweep the floor here. And see, this is this is how I'm this is what I'm talking about. Uh, people that support 1999 being a part of, you know, <laughs> This is what happens with those types of people. <laughs> yeah. Natalie says, I've arrived with my Yoo-Hoo. Did I get to hers? I don't know. But I, uh, there you go again. And then Brandon, there you go. Here, Brandon's in. Oh, my. Look goodness. at all those. Look at that. Wow. It's a lot of area galaxies. Of, area of the night, Bob. Great Man. call. Yeah. So happening there. Love it. Look at all those. So Man, the, look at that. The, what do you said is this one right here. Um, but there's so many around in this area. Unbelievable. Yeah, there's what? I mean, let's see if we can count them. There's like, there's got to be over yeah. 10. There's got to be over 10 there. I can show you my screen in Sky Safari Pro. It's hilarious because all it is is ovals in that area. Uh, within like basically one degree, it's just a series of ovals, uh, which is fantastic. So this is... Um... Wow. So the big elliptical on the left, NGC 3842, has yep. one of the largest black holes ever ever detected with a mass of 9.7 billion solar masses. Uh, so this is the Leo cluster. I had the oh, okay, yeah, I'd had I had some of this on my um, my list earlier and then I forgot. Um, but yeah, so that one there, that's a monster and it's 325 million light years away an almost 10 billion solar mass black hole wow yeah, that's 300 shit. million light years away 330 or so million yeah so New this stars is, have the coronavirus Re sorry real quick uh no but they do have a corona <laughs> this is true they do have a corona they do they all have the corona. Yeah, the joke i'm guessing i'm just throwing it out there or if it, it? it's even stranger hmm? sorry well I, I missed part of that ron sorry I said, and if it, if it wasn't on purpose, that's even stranger. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Sussa says, well, after all this YooHoo stuff, uh, you need to go to Belgium and stop at the Godiva workshop. And after that, uh, go to the All Edible Chocolate Museum. Oh uh, close the trip with some truffles. I don't know if I want to eat a museum, but that does sound pretty awesome. An edible museum. That sounds like a like a trap, you know. Yeah, it does. I like this guy. This little faint spiral heat guy here. Do you have any idea? What is that? NGC thirty eight, thirty seven, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Where was it? Oh no, that's. Uh, um, ooh, that's got to be uh, NGC thirty eight forty. Yeah, that's NGC thirty eight forty. Thirty eight forty. That okay. one. That one uh, is 350 million light years, Stephen. That wow. little face on up there. Jeez. 350 million light years. 
and uh, and it so definitely doesn't have Yuhu in that galaxy. How come but this guy yeah. got got an NGC, but this guy gets relegated to PGC? You know, like the, maybe because uh, Herschel, di <laughs> Herschel didn't see it. I guess, huh? He I looked guess. in that area and it didn't. Yeah, it seems brighter, but interesting. Yeah, maybe. Let me see. Um, got confused because there's so many in this area. Yeah, you're right. That one I see only a UGC and a PGC designation for it. Um, but you're right. Uh, so he just missed it. William Herschel and his son John and Carolyn Herschel. All the Herschels missed it. Herschel family. Yeah, the Herschel family. Yeah. That's interesting. I like that galaxy though. Can you zoom back in a little bit on that particular in the center? Feller in the feller? Oh, oh look at that, dude. Hey, he's lumpy. It kind of reminds me of the whale galaxy, you know? Yeah, a whale it, and the pup. Look, it has a little... Yeah, it's like a little pup. It's, it's a mini whale. and a mini, It's like a little beluga or something. I don't know. Yeah, we should name, <laughs> we should nickname it, man. I mean... Oh. <laughs> yeah, basically. That one is uh, 320 million light years, if anybody cares about the distance for that one. So Long way it's off. About We're not going the same. there anytime soon. <laughs> no, I don't think we'll make it. We can try. Uh, Bob says, I was curious... How many other or how many galaxies would be in there? Very cool. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. That was a yeah. fantastic. Uh, I, and I count more than ten. I mean, oh, yeah. just just offhand here, there's got to be twenty to thirty galaxies. All those little faint little slivers of nothing. Those are all yeah. massive galaxies. Just very. There's very more far galaxies away. in here than stars in the that we in the field. Yeah, absolutely. Great point. Oh. Man. Alicia says she's arrived with her Yuhu. Thank you, Alicia Bergenstock. <laughs> BB01, what's up, man? I'm going to try uh, try and check that out in my 28-inch telescope next chance I get. Ooh, very nice. I'm, I'm assuming that's a daub. But if you have a 28-inch something else, that's amazing, sir. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Camille says, yeah, but you can eat anything you see. Again, that the floor... I'm not eating the floor. That'd be weird, but I bet there's some good chocolate in those walls. Those walls could melt. Uh, look at all the Yoohoo fans we're, we're getting in here all of a sudden. This is amazing. I wonder why. <laughs> Did y'all make a thousand, Cindy says? <laughs> I don't know, Ron. Do you have a count for us? Can you see how many colors there are? I'll look it up here. Let's see where we're at on Deep Sky, dude, just to start. Abby, oh man, I've never seen a, a last name like this. Have y'all Abby House Connect? Is that is did I get that right? House Connect. That is a cool name. I like that name. I may change my name from Young to House Connect. House Connect. House I think Connect. the K would probably isn't hard, but House oh, you're Connect. probably right. House Connect. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All Good right. Call. All right. This is gonna be the last one. So we got a question go. for thirty-nine eighty-one. And just see that. And that's there we go. I, I'm just doing that because it was the first one you said. So um, I only get one. <laughs> no cheating. Yeah, no. so <laughs> you're like, like Spider-Man. You only get one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> save that 5861 tone for next time. We'll hit that one. Uh, we'll hit that one for you. Man, uh, so many, see. so many targets. I want to image now, like more deeply. I know that last one was fantastic, man. That was. Yeah. I may, I may I love how, do that one again. Oh, but there's some other good ones like Hickson, uh, Hickson 44. I think we did earlier. That was pretty cool yeah, too. The the box was great. This Hickson box, 61. Yeah. That was that was like one of my favorites of the evening. But besides seeing the worm, that was worm, really cool. Worm's pretty cool. But I don't know if, if going deeper would actually show much more on that one. Yeah, and it says I've arrived with my Yuhu. Oh, look at that. Ooh, man, I love that gal. Look at, look at that thing. Very spirally, very elongated. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, it looks like a comma and a uh, an ass or like a print or whatever the uh, comma and the what is the one that apostrophe? Sorry. Yeah. My brain, my Here's the you know, <laughs> amazing shot from um, the VLT scopes again. Uh, this is Shark Cat, Gary. Oh, look at that. So that's what we're trying to get here. So this is the very large telescopes in Chile that took this image. So that's what we're... And that's a perfect yeah. orientation there. Look at that. Yeah, they oriented it exactly the same way. Or maybe it could be... But no, I think it's pretty much the same. Yeah. No, see the triangle of stars there to the left? Yeah. 
Yep, you're right. It's, that li- that yeah. little B star next to that one. Isn't that cute? That little double star. <laughs> that little cute yeah. double star. House neck. Oh. Okay, sorry, Abby. We got you. We got you, Abby. Uh, Sam says, I've arrived with my Cheetos and you who. Oh, no. <laughs> Flaming. Cheetos. That's, that's if, a bad combo. Sam, if they're. You're going to get sick. Who, we just became best friends because I'm totally down for that. Will can't handle it. Uh, we, we, like, no, ch- man. Uh, yeah, whew, okay. Cheetos uh, and, and you who I can think of nothing maybe worse, but maybe pickles and ice cream. Uh, Lynette, Lynette says that's an awesome spiral galaxy. Is that indeed what it is? Uh, Steven, yeah, is it a spiral? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at it. It's a spiral. <laughs> See, I was going to say what Eddie said, but I didn't want it to go ah. the wrong way. But thank you, Eddie, because we're it's 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 after hours here. Yeah. But uh, a number is a number. But I saw that too, Eddie. I saw that. So, ha, huh, I'm not the only one. <laughs> uh, Joey Best says, that's amazing. This is my first time. I will be back to see more. Thank you, Joey, uh, for hanging out with us. Uh, as always, we appreciate Tony's minions over here. Anytime we can get them, it's always fun. I use this magical software suite called Pix Insight. Oh, uh, Pix Insight. The devil. Yeah. It is the devil, if, especially if you don't know what you're doing and you're like, just like, what? It only took me a couple of years to learn <laughs> like <laughs> totally like how it all works. Um, it's actually not as bad. It's just, it doesn't work like you expect it to work. And you come in thinking it's going to be Photoshop or something. You're going to have a bad time. I think it's actually better to just start off totally fresh with that without, without any expectations. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah Nicole says, uh, ride with her. Yoo-hoo. Thank you, Nicole, for joining us. Wow. Poppy C. This is a really good friend of mine who uh, is one of the best photographers I know, uh, Antoine Ribot. I think I say, say his name right, R- Ribot. Ribot. Uh, he's, a, he's an awesome dude. I met him at Texas Star Party a few years ago. Saw him in Casper at the Eclipse. We got to hang out and kind of reunite. Poppy's a great dude. He uh, says, not bad compared to the VLT, Stephen. Uh, what are the, sco- uh, the scope specifics? Did I say that right? Specif- specifics. 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 Uh, this 16 inch RCOS, average to 10 optical systems, uh, F9 reduced to F6.8, uh, and um, ZWO ASI 1600, blah, 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 up here in the corner. If you could just mute. Uh, and um, Paramount ME is the mount. Which is just like I'd sell my left kidney for that, or my right kidney, whichever one you want for that Paramount. This is the worst thing I've ever heard of in my life. But if you heat the Cheetos in the microwave, they taste good. That just uh, oh. Oh. next thing, next thing you know, these people are going to be telling us they're putting yuho in the microwave and drinking it as hot chocolate. Oh yeah, and with like <laughs> cereal with the yuho as your as your milk, and then the Cheetos. As, yeah, God. Actually, hot. You know what, like, but I've never tried hot yuho, but I figure it's probably something like Ovaltine or just like a really weak hot chocolate yeah. <laughs> oh yeah and see jane doesn't even know what you who is uh it's a it's a chocolate drink it's not it chocolate is. milk delicious i don't i don't agree with ron we we sit on the opposite it's side amazing. of the table here it's, it's the best it's super funny because will does not like it and it is quite literally i am i my favorite thing is milk and above milk is you who that's how much i love you it's my absolute it really is my favorite thing I'm not too joking. I haven't had it forever, but I used to go like on my cheat day back when I was taking care of myself like two decades ago. I would go at midnight to the 24 hour Walmart and I grab like a pizza and I would grab a six pack of Yoohoo. The Yoohoo would be gone before I got home. 1500, like chugging them. Wow. I love, them. love Yoohoo. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Um, uh, <laughs> Let's see. Poppy says, uh, amazing. Thanks, man. Would love to join a session in the future. Absolutely, dude. We have got to get you in here. Uh, Because he was, guys, this guy right here was the Time Magazine photographer for the Eclipse. Wow. You know, he was the guy. Nice. Uh, He is is the man, and he has done multiple uh, Eclipses. 
and he's just a fantastic amateur astronomer and photographer. I hope we reunite, Poppy, or I should call you Antoine, because it sounds weird to call you Poppy like that. It, it's Poppy. <laughs> it sounds, yeah. yeah. My instructor, my flight instructor is from uh, uh, Argentina, and he's always saying, he's like, all right, Poppy. You know, and he calls me, he's like, we're going to meet at 530 at the airport, Poppy. And I'm like, stop. Stop it, Alejandro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alejandro is trying to tell you something, bro. We'll get to, we'll get through some more yeah. comments here while you uh while maybe we'll just leave that one up, Stephen, for a second. We'll get through some sure. final comments here as we're closing oh, her out. Look at closing you. It the control. You who is wrong, but see, Lynette still came with it. That's how that's hilarious. Pamela came with some you who as well. Chocolate water, so nasty though. Thank you, Sam. So, so tasty. Exactly. So tasty. Reread that, bro. I'm, I'm willing to give it a chance. And like Steven, like, like Steven said, he hasn't tried to drink in 10 years. And that's where I, you know, so like five or six years ago, I was like, man, I forgot about, yeah, I forgot about Yuhu. What is this? So I grabbed a cold one on, I think I was on like a road trip or something, shook it up, you know, it was in a glass bottle and I was, and I was just like, oh, like what, what? Oh, I remember liking it as a kid. And now I, I remember trying it again later as like a, you know, teenager or something. And I just was like, uh, yeah, I don't like it. I, I mean, so you know what weird to me. I didn't know anybody on the planet didn't like you who I thought that was a universal thing. I thought it was just like, you know, Coke or Pepsi, Coke. I mean, we have right, Pepsi. Man. No, I said Coke. You can bring you know me what I, you know what I'm gonna do, Ron? Uh, whenever these uh these people start sending me Yoohoo because they know that I can't stand it, I'm just gonna drop ship it to you. Absolutely uh, you do. And it's gonna be gone. I'm gonna be 350 pounds from you who Hey, yeah, 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 sweet. <laughs> oh, Sam says I've ever had strawberry. Now I would be more willing to try strawberry Yuhu, but I am gonna try chocolate Yuhu in That's the not Yuhu, though. Strawberry Yuhu is a Yuhu. I can't even mm. like stomach the thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like strawberry oh, way man. is like what it is. Slam like... in the toilet after that. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> And he says, I want a quarter pounder with cheese and bacon. Man, brother, me too. I can't wait till society can't opens back food. up. Yeah, you yeah, can't think about food. Uh, you can drink it slow if it's quick. You can't drink it slow if it's quick. I like that. That's a good uh, one. Uh, this is now, Linda. Or it was now. now. We're wrapped. Now. We're wrapped. Now. What, what happened to the, what ben happened was now. We just passed yeah. it. Ben was now. Now this is a live now. image on the on the screen. Yes. Yes. No. No. Elon Musk satellites can be seen. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, Brad. Brad agrees. Chocolate water. Uh, Dean says, "I bet uh, Yuhu would be good in coffee." But, whoa, that just sounds horrible. But maybe he's right. Uh, Jane says, "Ha ha, we'll stick to my hot chocolate tonight." Watching the galaxies go by. That's even better. I like that. Jane, you're drinking some hot chocolate. Uh, Jamie says, "Hi." Uh, Dean says, "You who? Hey, we, we we understood you, brother." Uh, Abby right. says, "You who and Nesquik is nasty." Mm -hmm. Yeah, my agree. Yes, you who purists, lol. That's me. Uh, well, I said the strawberry you who is you who. It's not <laughs> chocolate milk. Isn't milk either. It's milk like it's milk with chocolate added to it. Just because you put it in the front of it. I'm not saying it's not delicious. It is, Ooh. but it is no Shots longer. Fired. Oh man, what you do there, Stephen? That really wow! Look at that! Look at the extra. Nice. Yeah, now we've gone for almost ten minutes. Um, you can start to see that the title streams are really, really faint, but they're coming. Look at off how that. far it goes out there, though. Yeah. Yeah, they're super. Almost faint. all the way to that that uh, foreground star. That's amazing. Yeah. I spent like five hours on that. I'm sure it'd be <laughs> amazing. Um, wow. All right, but yeah, I'm, I've got a I've got a call all the night here, so. Yep. Uh, it's been uh, real let's fun. See. Uh, toss the you and uh, try, try try time find. I don't know. I don't know what that is. P Pomac. I've never heard of that. Uh, we do appreciate you guys watching us, though, man. We we enjoy uh, doing these feeds, and apparently, y'all like hanging out with us because we held uh, over fifty viewers basically the entire time. And I know some of y'all can join us, and some of y'all can't. You know, you can come and go. That's the way it goes. Uh, some kids get coal in their stockings. Will getting Yuhu. Oh. If I get Yuhu, uh, that's actually the wife right there. And yeah, it I is. Will... Oh yes, no, that is no, no. Lyra, do not do that gonna, to me. Lyra, I'm going to be hitting you up, and we're definitely going to we're going to we're going to we're going to work that one out. I want to fill up this <laughs> entire studio. I want to start a GoFundMe to raise money for flat earthers to bring Yuhu and fill up. 
<laughs> and fill up Will's Will's uh, Will's studio during the night of the smiley face in the sky. Oh yes, and that would be the the ultimate. Like three days from now, right? It's supposed to be happening. Yes, yeah, so, uh, May the sixteenth yeah. or something like that. Yeah, which well, there will be there will be no smiley face, guys. Just to let y'all know, uh, Gary, we do not broadcast every night. We broadcast really uh, when we find the time that Stephen is available uh, and stuff like that. So we just you know try to do it as much as we can. Uh, yeah. We appreciate y'all watching. Chris uh, says, "Hit that like button on YouTube." Weather's got to be good, yeah. yeah. Or we're just, I mean, I don't doesn't seem like it. I'm outside right now. There's no roof above my head. This is this, is, yeah. So it can't be raining for us to do this. Yeah, or or, or Stephen cloudy. will be a, a lot more damp than he is. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, thank you, Chris. Good night, Eddie. Thank you for joining us, my brother. It's always good to see you, dude. Uh, tell Cat I said hello. Thank you, Stephen. I'm sorry, Steve. I add an N on everything now. Haha, uh -huh, do it. Don't do it, Lyra. Uh, don't do it. Uh, thank you for the stream. We appreciate you, Dean. Uh, appreciate all you guys. Thanks. Thanks for uh, fun times astronomy with junk food. I love it. Uh, hopefully, you'll be streaming some cool things next week. Will yeah, we'll hope. Hopefully, dark skies are coming because uh, the moon is going into new moon phase, which means deep sky dudes like me, Stephen, and Ron here are very excited about that. Uh, I'm in Texas, so is Steven, and Ron down here is in Colorado. Thank you, Jane, for joining us again. Thank you, guys. That's Steven Hummel. Steven, do you have anything coming up, man? I know you just did um, a, a live thing. Uh, do you have anything else coming up soon? Yeah. Uh, the plan is this Saturday, uh, the McDonald Observatory YouTube account. Uh, I'll do another live stream, and I'm going to talk a little bit about galaxies in more detail. So if you were following along and being like, wow, these things look really cool, but I have absolutely no idea what any of this is you know, is or what it means, uh, then tune into my, uh, my live stream uh, this Saturday at 9.30 p.m. Central. Was, was, I haven't announced that yet because we're kind of waiting to see the updated weather forecasts. But yeah, going to be talking about galaxies and a little bit about the dark side of the universe. Uh, maybe we'll touch on dark energy and dark matter. So yeah, tune in. Very cool. Uh, those are awesome. Y'all can find those on the official McDonald Observatory YouTube page uh, or YouTube channel, whatever you want to call it. So be sure you go over there and subscribe for those. Uh, they're doing some lunar broadcasts, which are fantastic as well. Those are really nice. Um, and right there on the back of that 16-inch telescope, which is fantastic. Um, yep. Again, follow us on Instagram. Uh, you know, the Instagrams are all down below us and all around us. So definitely follow us. Uh, Steven is always posting amazing stuff uh, in his stories and on his page itself. Uh, and then, Ron, man, do you have any uh, final uh, thoughts for us? Any words of wisdom for the for the folks? No, man, always awesome. Uh, these are always great to be able to hop on to and talk about uh, all the cool stuff that's out there and just learn a ton of things, man. Uh, this is great. Uh, yeah, I've got, um, for me, I've got a bunch of stuff coming up every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, you can find, uh, find me on uh, Space Foundation, at Space Foundation, uh, on all the channels, except for Facebook, which is at Space Foundation 1. Uh, talking to space and science experts today was uh, David Eicher, the editor-in-chief of Astronomy Magazine. We're talking to Rose DF on Thursday, the entire Sensoria crew next week. Um, that uh, the all the all female team that went to high seas and trained uh, on a, on an analog mission. Um, then we got a bunch of stuff coming up with Explore Mars tomorrow. Is with Frank White and the Cosmic Perspective team. They're going to talk about his book Overview Effect. Next week we have uh, the Hubble Hugger himself. Um, one of my one of my uh, one of the people that I look up to. One of my role models, uh, John Grunsfeld, is going to be on um, one of our free webinars. Going to be talking about Hubble's anniversary. And then next Thursday, we have Commander Riker himself. We're going to talk to Jonathan Frakes uh, about everything that he's been doing. So I'm really excited about that. I may even co-host that one. So uh, that's going to be a really fun one. So follow at Explore Mars uh, everywhere. Uh, ExploreMars.org on Facebook. And then, um, you know, at Stardom Space Everywhere, I'm always, I'm always up to stuff there, but there's there's just way too much for all that. Steven's got to go. Yeah. He's got work to do. <laughs> there's all kinds of crazy places you can get at us, but definitely get at us on Instagram uh, and all the all the places you've, uh, you've watched us tonight. So follow us on all those places. Guys, we thank y'all so much for hanging out with us. What a, what a fun time these are. Uh, and we thank y'all for sharing these streams and following us. Uh, we appreciate that. Because there's a lot more to come, you know, uh, we, we get bored a lot. So it seems like we do these quite often, which is fantastic. And so uh, we thank y'all for hanging out. Um, I'm Will. You can find me at Deep Sky Dude on all the social media. So I would love uh, if you followed me there. 
there may or may not be a song coming out this week uh, from my project, the next release. You said so, that last week. Stop teasing us. I did, I did, but this week I, I really have to put it out stop. because I'm going out to a star party or a star party, a local gathering out in West Texas. Not as far as Steven is, but closer to oh, home. Okay. But, I was like, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're we're gonna come set up in the in the visitor center next to you and uh, oh, shoo away the mountain line for you. Go uh, away! <laughs> get out! Get off our property! Steven's out there with a broom chasing us off. <laughs> with a orders mask on, like, get out of here spraying Lysol on us. We love you guys. Thank y'all so much for being with us on a random Tuesday night when it's clear. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all hanging out and uh, hanging with us and bringing the yoo hoo all night long. Uh, y'all have a great evening. We'll see y'all on the next broadcast. Holla, holla, and, holla, uh, holla, 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 holla. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Do it. Wash your hands. Bye, y'all. Bye.